Happy Friday, motherfuckers! Let me hate it for you motherfuckers over here today. Super Saiyan Joku, I think you were the first one, motherfucker. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. Uh -huh. <laughs> Timmons, I don't have an intro for you, so I'm gonna give you the woke pack for life. For life. And I tell you what, motherfucker, since you've been showing up a lot, I'm gonna make room in here for motherfucker, uh, for motherfucking Timmons. Uh, I'll make room in here for motherfuckers. Uh, let me hit it for Gomer Kyle, who's also here today. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Kyle. Private Pile, I'm gonna give you three seconds. To wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! And none other than Australia's very own The Cunt is here! You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slob ready. Cause the cunt is here. Oh yeah, cheers, motherfuckers. Thank you all for being here on a Friday night. Now tonight, before we start, we are not being sponsored by Buzzball Chillers. All right, we don't have a sponsors. I'm drinking piña pineapple colada. It, it, basically, a piña colada. Uh, this is pretty strong, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Happy Fridays. You know how we do what we do, what it is that we do. I know, I know. I didn't have time to do my nails today, okay? I was busy working. God damn it. Uh, that's what the, the, the housewives, they go out and they get all pretty and shit because uh, they don't do nothing all day. They don't work. So, of course, they're going to look hot and shit. Motherfuckers, I gotta go out there in the sun and sweat and shit. You know, it does, it's nasty on my skin. The makeup doesn't help either. God damn it. Uh, anyways, let's get this show in a row, motherfuckers. You know what it is. I'll let you all know. Uh, sign up for the backup channels just in case we get banned. We have two strikes, one more, and the channel, they told me the channel will be deleted. All your videos and everything. Uh, we'll basically just lose, we'll lose all the dude podcasts and nothing for that other asshole because I never saved any of that ass. Uh, but I've been saving these videos so I can just re-upload them into all the other shit. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yes, I do want to be a housewife. Gomer, I just want to lay around all day sipping on wine and shit feeling pretty. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm just saying, you know, it just it pisses me off that, you know. Anyways... Uh, cheers, motherfuckers. Yeah, I do like pina coladas. Oh, the rain. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, August 25th, over here on the Discord, we're going to be watching All In at 6 p.m. Central. Uh, it was a hit. Uh, the last time we saw the WWE, it was badass. Uh, so we're definitely going to be doing this from now on. If you guys, there's something you want to see, like, we're definitely going to see the Tyson versus Logan Paul and shit, but if there's any ass you guys want to see, let me know and shit. We might show it on the Discord. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way we do. Uh, we can even watch the Super Bowl and shit and ass like that. I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Discord's, Discord is officially badass. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. All right. Uh, but anyways, let's get this let's get this show on the road, motherfuckers. Uh, cause a lot of ass happened, and I don't know some some other some other bullshit, and and, and some shit happened. But uh, let's get into it. Of course, our social medias at Cinnaman six six five for the X at the Underground Broadcast with the little lines in the bottom in between the words for the Instagram. 
And we don't give a fuck about TikTok. All right, we the, the videos are there from before, but we're not uploading anymore. Fucking assholes, shadow ban us and shit. Uh, so yeah, that's what we do. You whatever you send me on your fucking social medias, I will share share here. And since primarily this is one of those types of channels, we have those types of people watching. And so what are those types of people? Super Saiyan Joku sent me this today earlier. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Let's see what he said. He says, I mentioned you in a post. Oh, he mentioned me in a post. It's IG. He said, I stopped by a different spot to pick up some different pot. Oh, that's badass. Catch you on the up and up, son of man. You rhyme there, badass. At the underground broadcast. Cheers, small flowers. Hashtag. Ah, uh, yeah. Hashtag marijuana. Hashtag Mary Jane. And hashtag smoke weed every day. Ah, uh, yeah. Cheers, Joker. <laughs> now, let me see what you got. You got seven grams for 52 bucks. That's actually pretty good. How much? It's because this is where it pisses me off because it says 20% THC and TAC. Uh, see, like, I don't, you know, because I'm not a nerd. So I don't know. Let me go back to that part. I don't know some of these things. Uh, slow cured and hand trimmed for rich flavors. That's badass. Terrapinoly, carilofening, osamine. I don't know what any of that is. Total terps. What's a terp? God damn it. This is why, like, I'm, I'm afraid for them to legalize it. Because I think we're going to get gypped with his ass. These nerds are going to be like, yeah, yeah, this is not, you know, I don't even know what they're selling me. That's all I'm saying. Uh, But but it looks good. And I bet it got you high, motherfucker. I'll see you like that. I like I like the, the, the signs in the beginning. Hey, bud. <laughs> There's no smoking allowed. Walking, you can't be walking around smoking. All right, do it in your house. We don't want no fucking. We don't want no druggies polluting the air outside. Is basically what what this sign is saying. <laughs> fucking fucking uh, Vermont and then, uh, at Marlboro Road. Oh, that's badass, Marlboro Road. Uh, you stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, bar Bud Barn, Hempy Curian. That's the store. And they have an art shop gallery with frogs, leopard frogs. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, it sounds like a pretty cool store, man. You should have taken some pictures of those frogs. That would have been badass, is all I'm saying. Uh, this is what I'm currently, motherfucker, what I'm currently doing right now. You don't see me smoking right now. And the reason is because I took some caps by Good Morals. These are Sour Twist, Apple. Uh, they, they have THCA. THCP and D9s. Delta 9. And it has the mushroom extract in this. Now, I didn't know if this was any good. And so the other day, <clears throat> I took I took two. These are 500 milligram for each. I'll show you what they look like. They're 500 milligrams. This is what they looks like. See, it's just a, it's a gummy, you know. This is it's just like that small 500 milligram ass of an aftertaste. And you know what that aftertaste is? It's the D9, bros. I'm starting to to be like these D8s and D9s. That's not weed, man. That's like fucking shit they're making in labs and shit, man. That's what's pissing me off about this ass. Uh, but the THCP and the THCA, that's whatever. But anyways, I took two. And uh, in, in about two hours, I was really mellow and really happy. And right away, because I, look, you know the cinema, man. The world pisses me off. 
Just going outside and looking at human beings. Just, ugh. That's the way it is. But I was really happy to be out there working. <laughs> I was happy. And I, right away I knew, I was like, because I haven't done mushrooms since I was like 20, 20, 21 or 22. No, no, then I did them afterwards. I did them till I was like, I must have been 23, 24, 20, 23, 24. <laughs> what was the last time? So it was a long, long time ago. But I right away felt... It's not str it wasn't strong, but I felt it, and I said, this does have the mushroom stuff, because I was really happy. Um, and then by hour number four, holy shit, man, I think the fucking D9s and all the other shit hit, because I was just fucking coasting through the day. I was like, and that's the way I was walking, too. I wasn't even moving my legs. I was sitting in a sitting down position, just floating, traveling like that, like this. I was like, "This is badass." <laughs> I don't know how I was walking, but that's how I that's how I, I saw myself. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I took two and a half of these uh, around four forty. <laughs> so this this uh, I feel really really good and. Um, and this podcast might get really bad <laughs> in the next hour or so, okay? I'm sorry, y'all. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, but I found some other shit. <laughs> I found some other shit at the store. The guy sold me this for three bucks. And it's also by Caps Good Moral. And this one's 1,400 milligrams, just one gummy. And he said, dude, take this if you're not going to do anything all day. Like, you're, it's your day off. Take it. He goes, don't do it. you got to go to work, dude, because trust me, you might fall asleep. And I said, okay, cool. And then here, the Arab guy sold me this one for three bucks. This is super shady uh, because it just says rocket. And uh, I went online, and there's only one video of one guy who bought this, and he and he he made a review, and he said, "I bought this at the convenience store from an Arab." <laughs> he literally said that, and he said, "Fucking super shady, just like I thought, super shady." But it's 1,400 milligrams, also, um, and. Uh, <laughs> He took it and he did the video and he feels good after two hours. And then after that, he comes back like two more hours later. And he said, I don't even remember when I fell asleep. <laughs> he goes, he goes, it's strong. So, yeah. So I have these two motherfuckers. And for someone who's been smoking a lot like me, I think because I just took two and a half. Right. So that's what. Like, that's about twelve hundred milligrams. Or 1300 milligrams that I just took and I'm, I'm gonna be able to I'm coast through the show like nothing because I smoke weed uh, so these pussies maybe maybe I'm like maybe this would be nothing for me I'm just saying uh, y'all let me know if you've had some of these but uh, let me get into the comments y'all motherfuckers talking about wrestling y'all wait till we do the wrestling motherfuckers oh man oh, there's some there's something going on in the in the pop culture we'll get to it don't worry guys I don't want to jump ahead uh, but let's get into the comments because there is a lot of comments and shit for some strange fucking reason um <laughs> all of a sudden this blows up for whatever fucking reason. We're not going to do more than 45 minutes of comments. I'm just doing it because we don't even have subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> anyways, Depost over here on the regular on the regular podcast video. Depost says another great show. And he puts those badass pink sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Tess, Depost. <laughs> like X23 puts on those sunglasses. Um, Brime the world on the, cause I put the, I put the message like to the discord for our, the SummerSlam. 
And he put left in my ass off and he says, hey, I can get a small app if you want, because I was asking for help for the Discord. But I, I spent all day, I spent all day, I told you guys, I spent all day looking at YouTube videos and, and following the instructions these nerds were saying. But I set up our Discord, so now we can do this ass. Um. Yeah, 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 so Brian was there, he also showed up, the motherfucker. Go subscribe to him. These motherfuckers are always after fucking child molesters and child predators. And they expose them, too. And their own channel, too. They they bring them on. You want to talk? Come on here. And then they all start talking shit to them. <laughs> it's fucking badass. Uh, but anyways. Anthony Timmons on the Jonathan Majors uh, has a future in women's boxing. He says, Jonathan Majors, Ezra Miller, and the rest of their ilk... Uh, they need to face reality. We're all bored with a shelf life. Nobody lives forever. And life doesn't owe you or anybody else jack fucking shit. Deal with it, bitches. Oh, Timmy. Cheers, Timmy. Timmons got crazy there. Tongue got crazy. Oh. Timmons also says on the on the trafficking uh, arrests on Comic Con, he says, Trying to kidnap cosplayers? Now I've officially heard everything. That's exactly what I thought when I read the headline. And I said, Man, this is good to cover. But I genuinely couldn't believe it. If it hadn't have been from that credible source, I had it, I wouldn't have believed it. And I said, Shit. What world? No. What reality are we living in? What what has those six sons of bitches over at CERN fucked up? They fucked something up in the timelines fucked right now. That's all I'm saying. They're fucking with reality. Cheers, Timmons. Uh, Doug Unfunny, let me hit it for this fucking dick. Where is he? Woke as fuck. He says, on the Comic-Con trafficking stuff, he says, God damn you, son of man. I had to Google this to check how much of this was true. And he puts a bunch of laughing faces. Cheers. Hashtag. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'm doing the woke pack. That's W P for live, bitches. Ah, uh, yeah, that's how we do in this channel. I don't know how they do in other channels, but that's how we do in this channel. All right, let it be known. All right, cheers, Doug. Thank you for commenting, you dick. I love you. Go, Mark Kyle. Jonathan Majors. He says, Apparently, they're giving gold medals out to domestic abuse now. Oh, in domestic abuse now. <laughs> These people really are kicking the women's movement by virtue signaling this BS. Those real women got screwed in the Olympics. Cheers. Hashtag. Hashtag. All right, all right. This, 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 uh, <laughs> this is that kind of channel. All right. <laughs> Cheers, Gomer. Right, let's see. The cunt. Oh, the motherfucker. He says on the Jonathan Majors video. His new movie coming up. Fist of the Pumpkin Spice Latte. He's gonna be teaming up with Mel Gibson, who will teach him his finisher move, the White Claw Yoga Strike. Oh, you should do that to a comic book, motherfucker. This guy does some comic books and shit. He does parodies in the comic books. They're fucking funny. Cheers, cut. Oh, fucking Rocco, oh, the Satanist. Let me hit it for this dick. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco! 
Rocco in the Jonathan Majors video says, I fully support the Son of Man in women's boxing. Hey, well, well, yeah, that's true. I, I did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do it if I if I wanted to. I don't. I really don't want to. I mean, it's too much work. To be honest with you, I'm not that kind of a woman. I'm just more of a housewife. I just want to just chill and dr get drunk and high all day. Get fucked. Oh yeah. Cheers. Heck. With the right trainer, they can even become women's. He can eat. They can even become women's world champion. A hey, good, good job on that. They women's world champion one day. Son of Man versus Ezra Miller would sell out MGM Grand within minutes. Oh, it really would. Cheers, Son of Man. Hashtag. <laughs> No, 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 fuck the MGM Gram. If I'm gonna fucking fight Ezra Miller, it's gonna be a bare knuckle street fight outside of the club when we're both drunk. That's how it's gonna go down, bitches. Oh, yeah, cheers. <laughs> That's how it would go down with me. Fuck you, Ezra Miller. Any day of the week, just tell me we'll go get drunk and then we'll go outside and fuck each other up. Pussy. You fucking wizard goose or whatever the bullshit you call yourself, motherfucker. Cheers, Rocco. Thank you for co commenting. Oh, D Post on the Comic Con Trafficking says, I've got a burning question. How on earth does Trump's ear not have a scratch on it? You'd think there'd be a chunk missing, but it looks like it healed miraculously. It's freaking amazing. Trump, the chameleon, can regrow his tail. I mean, ear. No, 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 calm down. Look, I've already, I, I don't have fucking shit, but I, I, I saw it last time, and it's like, you know what they, they did? Because these motherfuckers are rich, depots. They go and get stem cells, and they fucking grow skin grafts, and this is plastic surgery. But if you look at the piece, it's fucking wider than the rest of his ear because it's brand new. And it's probably not even from, it's probably from another part of his body that they fucking, that's what they do, man. That's what they do. These motherfuckers have money, bro. These motherfuckers have money and they fixed his ear. And you could tell, you could see it, you could see it. I saw it. It looks like, like a, a little piece was added on there and shit. Or it's a scam and you know we're all getting jib duped and shit and he's the Antichrist. And we'll find out in seven years because he's supposed to give us seven years of peace before he just, just shows us all he's the devil. And then when everyone's fucked. Cheers. <laughs> Alright, let's just keep going. Deep host. Thank you for that. Oh, Larry Land on the oh yeah, it's nice. Okay, so I started posting my 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 fucking my old music. I play the music during the breaks, in the lives. For those of you who show up on the live show, not the re-upload, the pussy edited version is what I call it. Uh, those motherfuckers see the show and all the fuck ups and shit. And also, when I go take a piss, because a motherfucker's drinking here and drinking water and all his ass, and even sometimes he just gotta go, you know? And so, I gotta take a break. And so, when that shit happens, I play some music in the background, some old music and shit. And so, then I decided, uh, I guess somebody, I don't know, something like, I just fucking realized that these are things that I worked on, and I should at least put them up so that... When I am no longer here, all this is still there after I'm gone. Whether anybody looks at it or not, I give a fuck. The point is, I got it done. I did these things. You know, um, do I still do music? Uh, I fuck around, but I'm not like, you know, I haven't been inspired in years to like sit down and make a whole album and write down thoughts and things like that. But I, I fuck around from time to time, and I just this is just random stuff. And I the music for the dudes podcast, I did that, you know, and that was the inspiration. I was just trying to think of a cool intro to, and then of course I did the fuck this the underground broadcast. That's that's fucking all me. So that's shit. I can do it. 
but you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll record myself just fucking around and see what I do, and I might, I might upload it. So it'll be under a music playlist or, or something like that. It'll be down there. Uh, but yeah, I'm uploading my old albums, and I'm trying to put at least two a day. Uh, it's 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 a lot of fucking music. I only got to put one up today. We'll see how many if I even get to do some this weekend. I might pull up, or maybe next week. But there's a few more albums up. And holy shit! All the way from the motherfucking Philippines, it's none other than Andrew Sanchez! We don't test any of our products on animals. We use Filipino children. Cheers, Sanchez! We love you on this channel. Thank you for watching us all the way from the Philippines. Hey, and Larry Lenn is here! <laughs> Cheers, Larry! We're about to read your comment, motherfucker. Uh, he says, good shit, mofo, is what he said! Aye. <laughs> I was basically explaining to people that this is my old music and shit that I did, and I just wanted to put it up so that it's up there, you know, archived forever. Uh, you know, and I don't know, I haven't done anything. I haven't, you know, had inspiration. But like I said, I don't know, maybe one day I'm here fucking around with music, and I just want to put something together. I might record myself, and I'll upload it so you all can see my process, you know. But as far as I, am I making a new album? No, I'm not, you know. Nothing like that. I'm just, you know... It's just music. It's it's always in you, and you just fuck around from time to time. But that back then, I really, you know, that's what I said a man was. That's what it was. Uh, so yeah, there's more albums I'm putting up. Probably next week on Monday, you'll start seeing more. Uh, I have a, t I did a total of fourteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I d this is what I do now. This is what I concentrate on doing for y'all. All right, the cinema man just wants to fucking talk to you and preach to you. All that ass that's out there. That's what I'm all about. Just ass. So that's what this channel basically is. Cheers. And thank you for being here, all you motherfuckers. Larry Land, Andrew Sanchez, The Cut, Super Saiyan Joku, fucking Gober Kyle, and Anthony Timmons. All you motherfuckers. It's always, don't you ever forget. And thank you all for being here, man. Uh, I do this just for, for y'all, motherfuckers, for the woke pack. Cheers. Let's keep it going. Oh, my God. This motherfucker. Been a while. He says nice, bro, to the music that I posted. The thank you. But let me hit it. For Houston, Texas, very own Jose Treviño. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Yeah. Yeah. Me tienes envidia, puto. Oh, yeah, Joe Trevino, you crazy motherfucker. Thank you for putting nice bro on the shit. That's the very first one I did. Obviously, it says one and shit. Um, and then there's others, and the, the music changes, and it just, you know, because it evolves as I, you know, and shit. I think, like, the kind of music I like, or because I fuck around now, like I said, I fuck around from time to time. It's just different, man. People change, you know, the stuff they, they like and the stuff they do. Uh, like I said, maybe one day I'll record myself when I'm fucking around here, and I'll put it up so y'all can see. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, th thanks for, you know, like I said, there's more albums coming up. Though. You'll see them next week. More at it. Uh, J Hart W. He says, holy shit, you make music too. Pretty dope. Hey, thank you, Jay. Yo, motherfucker, thank you for being here also for commenting and, and subscribing. We appreciate that and shit. That's like a long... Just okay, that's 2010, man. I was fucking... I don't even remember how old I was back then. It was a long time ago. Just put it like that. 
my hair. No, my I was still dyeing my hair. I, I've always dyed my hair. My hair was turning white since I was 11 years old, motherfuckers. All right, play it simple. And I just fucking just quit dying it one day and let it all just all hang out white. Gives a fuck. Super Saiyan Joku also on the on the first my first album. He says, "Let's fucking go, son of man. I'm your number one fanboy." Meow. Dope shit. Oh, yeah. fucking Joku. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, motherfucker. Uh, I really do appreciate y'all, motherfuckers. Rocco also says uh, the first album I posted up from 2010. He says, "Now, oh, he said." It, it's uh, it's from my song, okay? This is the, I think this is the hook. Now I'm stuck in a rut saying what the fuck. That shit's chopped and screwed or whatever back then. He says, yo, that song is dope. He says, hashtag cinnamon goat, hashtag. Live. Thank you, Rocco, for commenting, you fucking Satanist. You motherfucker. Uh, Rocco also on the Son of Man Hates James Gunn short video. He just puts a bunch of laughing faces. Yeah, yeah, fuck that guy. That's all I'm going to say about James Gunn. We got a lot of comments tonight, y'all motherfuckers. Thank you all for commenting. Uh, Akuma King. I don't know if this is a new guy or not. I hope you subscribe to us, Akuma King. But thank you very much for just dropping by. This is a kind of an old video, I think, because this is a dude's podcast expert. That's when he who should not be named was on the channel. That pussy. And Akuma says, What will claim George Martin's the first? Oh, what will claim George Martin first? Diabetes or gravity? Oh, at this rate, it looks like it's gonna be gravity and shit. Ah, oh, that, that, that pumpkin patch, fucking uh, sound of freedom, motherfucker. Brime the world is here. <laughs> that motherfucker's a legend, Brime. I don't, is it? Is it Brime? Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> I think I am saying I sound like an idiot. Brime the world. That's probably not how you say your name, you motherfucker. And you've been letting me call you that and shit like a dumbass. Uh, thank you for being here, you fucker. Cheers. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Brime, on his fucking comment, uh, he says... Uh, I clicked on it, but there's no point to click on it because basically I'm just complaining about like uh, I uh, about I don't know if we're gonna be able to show stuff of the the wrestling on fucking on Discord, and he said you can basically show anything on Discord as long as it's not the obvious child pornography and etc. So can you put regular pornography like fucking you know uh, like some young some young man in his twenties? Having sex with a lady in her 50s. Is that okay? I don't know. We don't know. Brime, you're going to have to be more specific with that. Uh, but no, child pornography. This guy's against that. And we all are. All that shit. That Jared, that motherfucker, glad he's in jail. R. Kelly, we're glad they're in jail. All right? That's what we're for in this channel. To keep those motherfuckers locked up. And if it were up to me, we would do more and lock them up, motherfuckers. They be up there in the city square naked. You can pass there and throw whatever you want at them. Or whatever. You want to throw a bullet at them? That's cool, man. That bullet comes out of a gun. That's cool. I mean, as long as you're throwing it, it's okay. Uh, that's all I'm saying. He says, I'm in multiple discords where the premise is watching movies or shows. Sometimes in my discourse, we stream movies. Wow, you just blew my mind. Holy fuck. We could fucking do so many things now. I had no idea. Anthony Timmons, he says it's it's John Bime. John Bime? Burn? I don't know. I don't know what you guys. <laughs> burn, burn the world or Bime. Bime the world. God damn it. Y'all motherfuckers are fucking me up. Is it Bime? It is Bime. It's Bime, right? I don't know. God damn it. I was calling him Burn the World or Bernie. Is it Bernie? 
It's a Bernie the world. It's Bernie. He must be Cajun. Yeah, that's probably it. Cheers, you pumpkin patch motherfucker. We love you. Let's see. Akuma King. Again. This time, thank God, it's not in a dude's podcast video. Uh, he's on the Star Wars short video. He says, Crazy Kathleen Kennedy quintuple down on put a chick in it and make it lame and gay. South Park needs to release another Pandaverse special immediately. Ah, oh, Star Wars is dead to me. Dead. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, thank you for fucking. I hope you subscribe to Kumo every every week. And this has been happening since we started this channel. And this is why I know they're fucking with us. But I've always said I think it's one friend that hates me so much, but secretly loves me. That he subscribes and unsubscribes. And subscribes and unsubscribes because he's conflicted. But it's affection for me. And that's why he does it. But we always lose a subscriber and we gain one back. Always. Every week. Just one. Keeps coming back and coming back for more. And then he gets mad because I offend him. And he quits. But then he comes back because he wants some more. I don't know what's going on, but I think it's YouTube fucking with us. Uh, Deep post on the Drake's career is over. He says, time for the underground broadcast to take over the place of Drake. You have to do market your market, your pro bot bot pod podcast. We have a broadcast. It's why I'm tripping on my own words, motherfucker. It's a broadcast. Let it be known. Fuck the podcast. Fuck you. He who should not be named. Not you, Depost. That son of a bitch. Just ruined everything. We're not a podcast anymore because it's some asshole. We're now a broadcast. Unfortunately. It's better. No, it's better. It's better. Fuck the podcast. That's what I'm saying. No longer a podcast, guys. Remember. Uh, anyways. We need to... He says we need to do market on the social media because it's fucking great. Well, I mean, like, it's just an imp. I I, I'm always posting on Instagram and on Twitter. I just, we don't have any followers. That's just the problem. <laughs> that, I mean, that's it, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just nowadays, when it comes down to it, is you have to pay the motherfuckers to advertise. And I'm going to be paying no motherfuckers. They should be paying me to be seeing this. But we're not there yet. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, Depost has here some 10 tips to promote your podcast. Uh, tune in to our YouTube podcast for the latest insights and interviews every week. Subscribe now and never miss an episode. Of, uh, uh, join us on YouTube for deep dives for fascinating topics with our expert guests. Hey, I don't get it. What are you trying? Are you telling me to just copy paste this to my Instagram? Because I could do that every day. You want me to copy paste these? Like that's for Monday. That one's for Tuesday. There's a lot of these. I could do this for like a week or two. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Is that what you want us to do? Oh no, you gotta make it simple, man. This is a lot of instructions. A lot, a lot. Expand your knowledge and enjoy thought provocative discussions by subscribing to our podcast. I don't think that's the kind of people that are gonna enjoy what we're saying on here and shit. I mean, we're talking about licking ass and shit. <laughs> Cheers. Deep post. Ah, I fucking love this guy. He's weird. <laughs> The cut of the Drake says, certified lo 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 lover boy, certified pedophile. Oh, what, 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 what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's not like us. He's not like us. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, motherfuckers. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Timmons, uh, the Britney Spears says, No, thank you. She's mental and I don't care. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's a princess. All right. Don't worry about it. Everybody, the, the Michael Jackson was mental and he was still beloved. All right. There's no problem. Don't problem. And one of these days, the whole world's going to love Cinnamon. 
wearing makeup, being drunk and high. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, not everyone's perfect. Not everyone's perfect. Uh, I Tim Inns continues and says, uh, under Kevin Feige is a baby with paints. He says, because I was talking about Giancarlo Esposito and the character looks nothing like the one from the comic book. He says, he looks nothing like Sidewinder. Another drop by the human ball sack Kevin Feige. I hate him more and more every day. Shit, Timmons. You're getting pretty crazy there. I like it. Cheers, Timmons! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Deep post on the Illuminosa uh, album that I posted, the 2013. Uh, and also in the description of that is the link so you can download them. Uh, he says, great music for chilling. Yeah, Illuminosa is one of, honestly, one of my favorite ones that I did. Because that one I can cruise, cause, or I could just chill here and just, like, listen to the music. Because it's just, because it's just, that's music to fucking your high and low, too. Like, oh, like, yeah. I like that one a lot, Illuminosa. Um, that's Lindsay Lohan. I put my tattoos on her. <laughs> That was my woman. That's my woman right there, man. Somebody got her pregnant already. She got a kid. God damn it. She's beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. Oh, my God. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh, it's none other than the yellowest motherfucker on this channel. Robo Igert. Konnichiwa. And Robo on the Cinnamon New Age Rebel album that I dropped, the 2012 one. I think that's the heaviest one. I really, when I make, like, they, they, okay, so I know you, it's, uh, somebody uh, had asked me, not you guys, but a friend of mine, when he saw some of these, he said, how did you make so many and drop so many and, like, so fast? And I said, it's just like, when I work on music, not every song's different. One song sounds bluesy. One song's really sounds depressing. One song's happy. One song's heavy metal. Like I just make music and then I save stuff and I save stuff and I just you know when I stay stuck like I can't think of a bridge I just save it and I move on and start making something new and it sounds different. Like every feeling is different. Everything that I'm doing is different. And so I just put those into folders like you know heavy and slow and stuff like that. And then when I start making an album or whatever, when I say I want to do an album, I go through those files and I pick music. You know that I. That I want, like, because I want this album to be, because it's art, you know? So I want this album to be a concept. And most of these, like, if you think about it, most of these are concepts. Yeah, what, what the stuff I'm talking about and, and, you know, the imagery and shit. And so I fucking, you know, I, I, I fucking pick from there the emotions from the stuff that I, I had been making. So I, it's not that, oh, shit, I finished so many. I just have a lot of music that I can just pick from. And it's my stuff that I've been doing and fucking around with. So that's it. That's how it is. Uh, and Robo, but Robo goes ahead. I just wanted to say, because like, there were so many that I had did, done all of a sudden or whatnot. Robo says, son of man, I listened to a few of these today. You never cease to amaze me, friend. I sh Let me just maximize this. Before. I showed a few songs to Holia. Oh my God, his wife. She thinks you're very talented and wanted me to tell you to continue on your path and not to quit. Keep it up, son of man. Me and the woke pack support you. Cheers. Hashtag. Woke pack. Oh, 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 live. That means a lot. That means a lot. Uh, like I said, I just music. It's like, it's just something I do. Like, whatever. It's nothing. I'm not making another album, like I said. Uh, but fucking uh i'm doing this like i said and as long as you guys show up the show will be here every friday night we'll be here doing this drinking them buzz balls ah yeah <laughs> taking them fucking taking them gummies you know what it is motherfuckers cheers robo and holy yeah we love you you ancient motherfuckers
Fuck it. And the Son of Man's mutant powers, which was my mutant powers, like, I would turn into smoke and travel through smoke. But it would be marijuana smoke, so I could be high when I'm traveling. <laughs> Anthony Timmons says, good one, son. Cheers, Timmons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, there's a new guy in the chat. Some guy say YT Quizzo. I think I said it. I think I said it right, Quizzo or X ex X Quizzo. Oh yeah, I hope I said that right and shit, you know. Cheers, motherfucker. Thank you for being here on a Friday night. If you feel comfortable, you can let us know uh where you're at, what country or what state. You don't have to be specific, but, you know, you know, motherfuckers. We got motherfuckers in here from motherfucking the Philippines, Australia. We got motherfuckers here from the South, too. Uh, it's shit. New York. Cheers to you, motherfuckers. Everybody out here representing on a, on a Friday night or Saturday morning, depending on what part of the world you're at. Cheers. Timmins. Timmins also says in the Drake's career is over. Drake? Is he famous? I never gave him a second thought. Yeah, this guy's done. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, fucking Universal's gonna be asking for their 400 fucking million dollars back from this motherfucker, cause there ain't no way in hell his next release is gonna be a hit. The way that they not like us, they not like us was a hit. Alright? Can't top that. You can't. If you could top it, you would've done it already. But you stayed quiet, and you didn't respond, so you got nothing, nothing to bring to the table. And no one's going to respect you for it. When you pull out your next hit, no one's going to respect you for it. You fucked up. You fucked up, Drake. And you know what? I'll come out and say it. Kendrick isn't even that good. <laughs> I ain't gonna come out and say it. Personally, I don't think he's that good, man. That guy's a little too... Um, I'll say it. You know, I don't give a fuck. He's too Black Panther-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say it, man. I mean, it's just... You either have to be into it or in, in the movement and know what you're talking about or you're not. And I frankly am not. That's the truth. You know? Look at me. I'm wearing makeup. I identify as a fucking woman. You know, what the fuck do I know about fucking black power and shit? I ain't gonna lie. I ain't over there in the BLMs in the middle of it. I'm not. There's a bunch of dumb sons of bitches that are over there. And I'm like, what are you doing over there? You're white. Get the fuck out of there, you idiot. It's not your shit. But people want to go over there and make asses of themselves. That's fine. Uh, I'm not talking about the BLMs. I'm talking about the idiots that want to go out there. You're not even part of that. C -c -c stay your ass home, okay? You dumb asses. Uh, Drake is over. He didn't respond. It's over. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck you. You fucked up. Thank God for Lil Wayne, who's distancing himself from Drake. Nick Minaj. Nobody wants to touch this motherfucker right now. Nobody. Only all the poor motherfuckers, you know, everybody like, fucking, uh, what's his name? Young Thug over there and fucking going to jail. He's all like, hey, let me put a feature. Yeah, because he needs it and shit. But nobody famous wants to be around this motherfucker. This child molester. You know, pedophile. Wop, 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 wop. Cheers, Kendrick! <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going, let's keep going. <laughs> Fucking Super Saiyan Joe, cool, at the paragraph and a half on the Drake video, and he says, I think Kendrick hates light skins. Oh! <laughs> nah, I just told you what he's all about, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, you're just, it's just, it's what it is, bro. We're all different, you know, that's what, what he's, that's their struggle, man. You know, my struggle is different. I just fucking, I, I just want to raise on my job for the minimum wage, but I'm all fucking, you know, like, fuck. You know, and if I quit, my cousin or some other fucking brown motherfucker is going to get the job and probably get paid less for it because he's a dumbass. And so there's a lose-lose situation, and that's why I'm stuck in the same position. But anyways, that's our struggle. That's our struggle as browns, okay? Blacks have it different. That's our struggle as browns. Let's keep it going. Let's keep going. Uh, Super Saiyan Joe goes, keeps going and says, I'm on Drake's side on this one. The music only. I jam out to all his music, R&B and all. Oh, fucking Joku over there. 
Da 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 da. No, how does he do it? He do he does like. Uh, I don't even know this motherfucker. He does the attitude and shit like da da da. <laughs> this guy never evolved from his fucking shit. That's all I'm gonna say, man. Uh, I just don't. He's gonna lose that universal deal, man. I'm just saying he's not gonna get no respect for nobody no more. Uh, Joku, uh, Joku says. Kendrick puts out an album every seven years or so, so I'm not a fan, okay, dot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of Kendrick either, but that's why I'm saying that Drake fucking just rolled over. Pussy. You know, Drake has taken out, to me, Drake has taken out stronger opponents, and he just rolled over and did nothing. <laughs> I was like, wow. Fuck you, Drake. You are, you do have ghost writers. It was all true. <laughs> Y'all know that 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 fucking that what was that? Uh, um, started from the bottom. Now here started from the bottom. Then the whole ten. That whole album was goes written by this guy on the internet, and Mick Mill exposed it years ago, and it was true, motherfuckers. It's crazy, bro. The reference tracks are there. It's that guy rapping him, and, and it's a little different because Drake adds his flow and his style to it. But it's the same song, the same track, and it's just another guy, and Drake changed the words because it sounded badass. Is this... The guy got paid. The guy got paid. <laughs> you know, that's the way the industry works. That's the way the industry works. Uh, and he got exposed. He got exposed. But this guy says, at the end of the day, I need music, and he has plenty of it. Okay? He's not like me. Oh, that fucking guy. Plus, Michael's Touch Jackson. Oh, this guy. R-rated. R. Kelly. Kelly Puff. Pe Petty. Philly. Diddy. <laughs> and plenty more Touch Kids, etc. <laughs> hey, take it easy, man. Fucking Brian the World's gonna come after you, motherfucker. <laughs> But we play their tunes, cheers, ma flowers, hush, hashtag. Live. Everyone who is in a position of power is just as bad, if not maybe even worse. But we just don't see it. All right. Some of these people didn't play nice with others and shit. This shit gets exposed suddenly or you do something or you don't do something they ask you to do <laughs> and stuff like this happens to you but they're all they're all degenerates is all i'm gonna say that's the nice way of putting it everyone in the industry is a degenerate and that's the nice way, because there's crazier words I could use that are probably going to be like, Oh, this guy's Alex Jones, and this guy, let's block him on YouTube, okay? They're all degenerates! All these motherfuckers, and they don't believe in God, and they fucking drink baby's blood and shit in the half. All that is real. They stay young forever. Holy fuck. Anyways, let's keep it going! We're going to get blocked all of a sudden here because we're spreading lies. This is not that kind of channel. Super Saiyan Joku. Oh, the Jonathan Majors fucking uh, video, he says. He needs more than 50 min 15 minutes of counseling a week. He also needs anger management classes. It works for me a little. Ah, he really was getting mad like he wanted to hit that poor lady. <laughs> I don't beat women if I don't if you don't count my kids. Ah, <laughs> I what is, oh man I hate when this happens let me see okay I slept a couple of these time a couple of times to put a bitch in check cheers mother flowers oh this fucking guy yeah 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 I don't think I've ever hit a woman uh but I did pull one to the floor and let me explain myself what I'm talking about pulling one to the floor all right. It was it was one of my exes a long long time ago And uh, it was a really bad breakup really bad because she was crazy And I was on drugs and so it was really bad 
And, and so we broke up over the phone. And that wasn't enough for someone who's crazy. That's not enough for someone who's crazy. So she came over to fucking make sure we were really fucking broken up, I guess. And I, instead of letting coming in, I fucking meet her outside. You're not coming in here, you fucking get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking pissed off. And she goes, and she has, you know, because she has those fake artificial nails. They're not real. They're like, they're like, they look like claws. And she goes to slap me, and she did. Ah, oh, like that. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, you bitch. So I went like that, but I didn't, I just grabbed her shirt right here. And I tugged her down like that. And so she fell straight, and this was, this was in the grass, alright, there's no concrete or nothing, okay, we was outside of my apartment, and before she even got close, I was already out there to telling her to go away, but she came out, and this was in the grass, and so she fell like that on the grass, <laughs> face flat, flat, and when she fell on the grass, because she had her car keys on the other hand, she dropped her car keys, so I grabbed her car keys, and I, oh, when, when I pulled her and she fell on the floor, for whatever reason, and I later found out why, my cousin supposedly, according to him, he was coming over because he wanted to know if I had any weed to smoke him out. But at that exact same time, he was coming in. He was coming in and he saw this. And when, I, when she fell on the ground, he grabbed me. He says, what are you doing, you idiot? You can't fucking it up. Like, she slapped me. Like, she's, I don't even, I don't want her here. And so right away, I saw she dropped her keys. So I grabbed her keys and I flung them across the street. And she's like, what the fuck? And so she's over there. And since it's a busy street, she's stuck like on the street waiting for cars. And then my cousin's all like, get the fuck out of here, bro. And I was like, all right. And so I jumped in this car and we left. And I never saw that bitch again. Thank God. It was a long, long time ago. You don't ever go through that again. Uh, so yeah, I didn't hit a woman, but I pulled her down to the ground. <laughs> That's what I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I got slapped by a, by a bitch. With claws. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> Cheers! Alright, let's see if this is the last comment. It was the last comment. Thank God. So I will say thank you all for all the fucking comments. Because without it, I don't think we would have a goddamn show. Uh, appreciate you, motherfuckers. Cheers to everybody. Make sure you send me stuff to your social medias down here. And we'll fucking share it to everybody. Uh, before I leave the comments section, though, as always, one of our own has a little bit of advice for y'all coming all the way. From good old the backwoods of good old Tennessee. Gomer Kyle's Redneck Weekly's Redneck Advice. Take it away, Gomer. Hey, this is Kyle with the Redneck Advice of the Week. Advice this week is simple. Meth. Don't do it. Meth is taking out a lot of good rednecks and country people. So please, just don't do it. That's the message this week. So... Hashtag woke pack for life. Hashtag woke son for life. Have a good one, folks. Cheers, Cobra. Thank you for the fucking redneck advice. And that's a good advice for anybody. That doesn't just goes for rednecks. Don't do meth. It's a very bad drug. It's very expensive, too. I mean, if you're doing meth, I think you're doing pretty well in life. And there's no reason for you to be doing meth. Because, I mean, it's a pretty expensive drug, okay? Don't do meth. Don't do it's bad for you. Anything white in general is bad for you. Stick to the greens. Stick to the greens. It's all good when you see the greens. Alright, I snorted a couple of green pills once and I woke up naked with two fucking men. It was badass. Cheers! Alright, alright, alright. We're done with the gun tech comments. And let's get into the weekly pop culture breakdown. And 
this week, I got to start us off with a downer. And this just happened today. It was announced. Go, Mark. I don't know if you heard. But Kevin Sullivan, the great Kevin Sullivan, passed away today. At the age of 74, motherfuckers. This guy was a legend in WCW. And he was also a producer and a booker for a very long time. And shit. Um, fuck, man. You know what's the crazy part that I always remember and I thought was really fucked up? Is that when he was back in the day, the storyline was that because he had his wife there as a fucking one of these girls that manages or whatever. Was a manager. And he said, well, the storyline, let's do a storyline where you fucking uh, start having an affair with my wife. And he was talking to Chris Benoit. And he said, well, let's do it. And because back then they would do kayfabe. And so when you would leave the arena, you would have to leave in the same car. And since like they were supposedly together because of the storyline, Benoit would leave with his wife in the car and they would have to travel together. And then because of that, they actually started having an affair and she left him for Chris Benoit. And then she got murdered. By him. Not by Kevin Sullivan, by Chris Benoit. Oh, I just, that, I'll never forget that because I was just like, what the fuck, bro? And this guy just died too, man. I don't know. Damn. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Oh, uh, this guy's a legend, bro. And I, and I'm, uh, I mean, there. I hope they do more tributes to him. Uh, I'll just put it like that. Uh, God damn, this 74 is pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty up there. That's pretty up there, you know, especially him. He was in the best shape. I think he some some accident happened with his leg. He lost his leg a couple of months ago and shit. He was already having problems and ass, uh, you know, then it just happens, you know, we all just wither away and we die slowly. Some faster than others. Cheers to Kevin Sullivan. You will be missed. <sighs> but. I'm going to get us right into. The Yeze. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because this week, his ex number one, his ex right hand man, before he fucking married this big titty big ass, no plastic surgery, fall natural, fucking horny vixen, before he found her and married her, this was his right hand, this was like before he masturbated, this is the guy he made sure he asked, is it okay if I fucking masturbate, and so this guy was really religious, he would tell him no, and so yeah, wouldn't masturbate that's what the, would happen milo yinalopoulos or whatever fucking hippopotamus bullshit name this fucking guy wants to be all right doesn't give a fuck if you try to get one of them Munjabian names you are not african motherfucker just because your white fucking parents were fucking living over there when you they gave birth to you doesn't make you african you son of a bitch uh but anyways this guy, Yinalapolis, is now claiming that Ye's dentist, the guy who gave him the titanium grill, which cost him $850,000, by the way. The titanium grill that Ye wears like Jaws. That guy would supply him with nitrous gas. So that Ye could get high. And that Milo was mad because he was saying they're taking advantage of him because he has a disability. Because he's fucking, uh, he's bipolar. And so they're taking advantage of him and shit. 
and and they said that the doctor knew that Ye was bipolar and that he would when he would go to get him his, his teeth and his bling and let me clean your diamonds and all his ass that they do over there the rappers he would go over there and get him high with that you like that motherfucker yeah yeah I fucking bad ass man yeah 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 you want some fuck yeah how much and that's how he got him and that Ye was giving this motherfucker fifty thousand dollars a month Fifty thousand dollars a month. Holy fuck. It's a lot of money. I don't even make that in three years. I don't even make that in four. Fuck. That's a lot of money on drugs. This guy over there with his fucking hot, half his age, younger wife with big titties and a big ass, fucking huffing, fucking balloons full of nitrix gas. <laughs> and then filming porns. That's crazy. Uh, these are some pretty outrageous claims by this fucking guy over here. All of a sudden trying to slander and betray. Trying to slander and betray my Yeze. I think it's a lot of bullshit and a lot of ass. I don't believe it. This is slander to the top. That's what I'm trying to say. This motherfucker over here. He's just mad because he no longer works in the company of greatness. Of legends. Yo, piece of shit. You're never, never gonna be in the presence of that ever again. And that's your fault, you dumbass. You didn't quit. They fired you. Pussy. Cheers, Jay-Z. We love you. <laughs> but we're done with the Jay-Z. And let's get into more celebrity ass. We're talking about rappers like Yeezy. 49 year old. 49 year old. Nelly. Remember this guy? It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. And then that other, that other hit. What was it? Smile for me, daddy. Let me see your grill. My grill. My grill. Oh, yeah. They got a lot of hits back in the day. You know? I could get a stomping in my Air Force One. Oh, yeah. That was back in the day. Back in the day. Nelly had it going on. You know? What is it? What that he did with that Kelly? I love you. My boo. No matter what I do. I do without you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that shit was that, was... that was the shit on the radio. All right? That was the shit. Well, this dumb son of a bitch got arrested for fucking leaving a casino at 4 a.m. in the motherfucking morning. Drunk as fuck. Gets into his fucking Lamborghini Diablo or fucking rims and tims and all the fucking lights and shit puffing a big fucking blunt and he leaves the fucking casino at 4 a.m drunk as fuck and he gets pulled over not for speeding because he was not speeding he was actually going below the speed limit he was going 30 miles an hour cruising a blunt he didn't run a red light or none of that ass they pulled him over because the cops saw the license plate had a warrant for his arrest. A warrant for driving around with no motherfucking car insurance. This guy's a multi-platinum millionaire. And he's driving around with no car insurance. Here we are, all of us, struggling day to day, paying insurance and fucking paying for your fucking inspections every fucking year and your tags and your fucking bullshit. Every time some, the light comes on, you have to go to AutoZone and tell you, oh, it's this $300 sensor and it's this size, but you, if you don't fix it, you'll, they'll fucking they'll fuck up the car even more. 
and so you have to get it replaced and shit and before you know it you've already spent fifteen hundred dollars it's a little piece of shit and some fucking mexican to come over and just go click it's fixed fuck you is what i say uh, and this son of a bitch over here millionaire can't even pay his fucking car insurance that's a bullshit god damn it fuck you nelly Oh, it gets even worse, motherfuckers. They took his ass to jail, and they booked him also with possession. Not for the blunt he was smoking, because over there, wherever the fuck he was caught, it's legal to drive around smoking weed, apparently, or some ass. It's okay. He's famous. Some famous people get away with that. No. He also got busted for possession of ecstasy. Motherfucker, you're 49 years old and you're still popping axles. What the fuck's wrong with it, motherfucker? Didn't it be out of your system already? Oh, could, I can't even imagine if I was still doing the drugs I was doing when I was in my early 20s. I'd be dead already. You know, I got maybe less than five years, but you know what? At least I know. That it's not going out tomorrow because I'd be all fucked up right now if I was still doing all these crazy things. We're sticking to buzz 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 ball chillers every Friday night. Cheers. Fuck you, Nelly. Your fucking rich ass problems. Go pay for your fucking car insurance, you idiot. And then you won't come out on the news like an idiot. God damn it. Stuff like this pisses me off because he's a legend. And for little fuck ups like this. Motherfucker, you pay your car insurance, you don't have to worry about getting pulled over with ecstasy, you idiot. God damn it. We're moving on. But since we are talking about druggies, here's another druggie. And another shameful, shameful, shameful. Nepo, baby. It's none other. Then Marcus Jordan, because he was seen over there in Spain in fucking Ibiza with his new girlfriend, Hottie, now with younger, no longer 50 year old plastic surgery, fucking Marissa Larsa Pippen. This is a youngin with real titties and real ass, and he's fucking that shit hard because he's got a big dick. We've all seen it already in the pictures in the past. We've shown, we've shown his dick. It's really big. It's really big, guys. Um, but here he is at breakfast. No fucking shame if you don't see it let me zoom in for you motherfuckers no fucking shame oh my god and if you think i'm lying look that's the real picture right there that ain't that that's not him with a spoon trying to fucking get some more cereal Oh, that's him getting fucked up, motherfucker! <laughs> this guy, hey, go to go to sleep, Matt Mato. What are you doing? Oh, I I have to I have to keep hanging. Everyone's still hanging. I have to keep up. I have to keep up. <laughs> Peer pressure. You fucking dumbass. You're rich and famous. Your daddy's rich. You're over there in Ibiza. Fucking hot ass chicks. Go to bed. Pendejo. That's good. That's all I gotta say. This guy's a dumbass. Fucking idiot. Look at that shit. That's like a golden. He's like a golden little spoon. That little shit that he's using to use a Coke right there. It's pure gold and diamonds encrusted. It's probably like 20 grand right there in his little hand right there for Coke. 20 grand. A spoon for Coke. 20 grand in his fucking two fingers. My whole salary. Two and a half years. Right there in his fingers. Son of a bitch. Oh, son of a... Son of a rich motherfucker is what it is. Motherfucker. Ah, that, you know what? That's when you know your parents love you. You know? When you're this piece of trash. And they still feed you and give you money and accept you in the family and all this ass. 
Is this tattoo a chain? What a pu what a dumb fucking pussy is is he's got a tattoo of a chain? <laughs> oh my god, who fucking told him that was cool? <laughs> Fucking Marcus, man. That's a that's I don't uh, man. I don't know. At the same time, I feel bad for him, you know, uh, cause he ain't young. He ain't young. What's the fuck has he got to be? And he's with beautiful women in Ibiza in Spain. The fuck's he got to be depressed about? It? Or like, uh, like I said, this is peer pressure. This is just like I gotta keep up. I gotta keep up. Everyone's everyone's still hanging out. I don't want to be the pussy. And fuck you, I'm a grown ass man, I'm going to bed, motherfuckers. Bitch, if you don't come to bed with me, you're fucking finding your own way home tonight. She'll be in bed sucking your dick. You'll be in bed too. Don't worry. You're a man, you control, you control your life and your situation. You don't have to give in to peer pressure for the rest of these pussies. This guy's a dumbass. That's all he is. Fuck you, Marcus Jordan. We're done. This fucking user chairs. <sighs> Those ball chillers, everybody. They're great. They're great for women, too. I mean, actually, these aren't just for women. You see? They don't even make a splash. So they don't fuck up your makeup. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I love them. Cheers. They need to make some of these like Bailey's. Actually, they have a coffee one. Oh my god. I bet you that one's like Bailey's. I gotta try that one out. Alright, alright. Let's keep it going, guys. Because everybody knows we haven't been covering it. I know I haven't been covering it, guys. Is the truth. But basically, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't, I, I genuinely don't enjoy uh, celebrating other people's suffering. Unless it's rapists or child molesters or motherfuckers who deserve it, like Ezra Miller and Jonathan Majors. Uh, but I don't, I don't enjoy other people's misery. I genuinely don't. And so when he who should not be named quit on all of us, I decided I wasn't going to do any of this misogynist racisms anymore. Fuck him. So I wasn't covering some of this. But I'm sure some of you know, because you've heard... That Ben Jen is in trouble. Yes. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are in the middle of about to get a divorce. He's already moved out. He's already bought his own apartment somewhere in New York and shit. And he doesn't even want to see her anymore. And she apparently tried because she doesn't want to. She feel like her PR, all her people, her people are telling her, hey, this is going to make you look bad. This is like your 100th marriage and everybody divorces your bitch ass and your last album didn't sell and you didn't sell any tickets for your for your fucking uh, concert. So you had to quit everything and cancel it. And it's going to make you even worse. Like you're the bitch of the world. And so she's like really trying to beg him. Don't do this. Let's work this out. But he's had enough. He's had enough. This is going to end up being for both of them because they didn't get no prenup. They're going to be the biggest, the biggest, most expensive fucking, let me get some, some closure experiment in the world. And poor her, because this guy's going to be the one scoring big because she has more money than him. So whatever piece of the pie, even if it's a small piece of pie from her ass, that's going to be a good piece of pie he's going to get. Uh, I don't think that's why he did it, obviously. I think he genuinely was like, um, I'm like, you know, he had the feelings again. But he realized, wow, it's been 10 years and she's still a fucking bitch. She hasn't changed. She's hot and her, her asshole is really tight. Uh, but she's still a bitch. And a dumbass. <laughs> um, so that's happening. That's happening. All the speculation, they're not talking to the media, so nobody knows. But it's all obvious what's happening between them. It's the shortest marriage, too, because they just got married maybe a few months ago, you know? Like, it just happened. So, god damn it. Uh, sorry for that. But there is one man who is stepping up and saying, I know what is really happening between them. 
And it's none other than Mr. Suge Knight. Because he has come out recently and said, Hey, I know exactly what's happening between Ben and Jen. The truth of the matter is when the FBI raided Diddy's house, they found they, they raided and confiscated all these videotapes. And they say, and they found these videotapes and they send them the videotapes. They send them to Ben Affleck. And the tapes that they found, not all of them, but some of the other tapes that they found, and supposedly that they gave the, the tapes to Ben Affleck. Are of Jennifer Lopez in P. Diddy's fucking uh, parties getting fucked by a ton of guys while he's there in the background going, uh huh, yeah, uh huh, yeah, because it's bad boy for life, uh, yeah. <laughs> Chair should die. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if I was in jail, I'd be saying crazy shit like that, but <laughs> it might be true, though. You think the FBI would say, hey, you know what? Fuck this bitch. Let's just screw over. Let's give Affleck these tapes of her being a whore in front of P. Diddy because he used her. She used him to get famous more. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to get to that later the cut. Trust me, we will. Ha <laughs> ha. But not yet. Oh my god. Poor Ben Affleck and poor Jennifer Lopez. It's a very expensive, very expensive uh, breakup, is all I'm saying. I think we're in trouble. But Ben Affleck is moving on. And this is how he's moving on, fellas. He is now wearing a fucking leather jacket and a, a red hot chili pepper shirt. And he got a mohawk and a bike. He's going through a midlife crisis. This fucking guy. Oh my god. They're going to get worse. It is. This is. Because after this is over, Jennifer Lopez right away is going to hop on another dick. And we're going to get another fucking fiasco. So this will be good for us. I mean, this channel will have something to talk about, I guess. But... I don't know, what do you think about Affleck's fucking mohawk? It's just, god damn it. He doesn't even look good. He looks like Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He looks fucking dumb. And what's up with those sunglasses, those Ray-Bans? They look fucking like they're broken or something. They don't even look even on his face. God damn it. I don't know. All I'm saying is that if I just broken up with my bitch... And I come out of the airport, I would have two fucking really tall blonde bitches on each side of me, walking out of the plane, walking into a limo, high as fuck, and drunk, looking like a badass. Nobody, somebody driving me and feeding me more drinks and food, like a badass. This is pussy over here. Let me try to be cool, like I'm 20. Look, motherfucker. You're 57 years old. You're not cool anymore, Affleck. You're not Batman. Fuck you and your motorcycle. Your bass. Uh, anyways, I'm done with this asshole. Cheers. Something more of a close call happened this week. Also in Ibiza. I don't know what's happened over there in Ibiza. All the celebrities over there in Spain and Ibiza. They want to be rich and famous and shit. So everyone's going over there. Oh, Mr. Put it Boy, Zach Efron, I have a brand new chin because I fell and hit my jaw because I was drunk and trying to fucking do that fucking Tom Cruise dance across my marble floor like a badass. And I slipped and I fell and I fucking broke my jaw and they had to surgically reconstruct it to look like a fucking Chad. And I no longer look fucking, I look weird now. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. He looks crooked. Anyways, uh, apparently... He almost died over there in Ibiza in Spain because the staff found him in the fucking pool. Just there, floating, drowned. And they pulled him out and shit and they resuscitated him or whatever his ass. And they took him to the hospital and he was hospitalized for a while. Uh, apparently, the dumbass was trying to show off in front of some bitches that were there by the pool.
And he did his badass Olympic dive off the shallow end of the pool. Dumbass. And his chest hit the fucking floor of the pool. Blech. And he took all his water in. And shit nearly killed himself. Idiot. Oh my god, that is fucking scary, man. I am really scared of any kind of pool accidents. Any kind. Kid or adult. When you're in the water, there's no time to play. I hate when people want to play water sports and, and, and volleyball and shit like wrestling or what is that, Marco Polo. And I said, you should not be playing any fucking games in the water. There's no time to be playing. If you want to be in the water, it's just to enjoy, to swim. But you need to be alert and ready to do something if you're going to die. All right? You could die right away. Fucking idiots. People go over there and they think it's fun and shit. You wonder why people people die all the time over there in the public pools. All the time, kids die. Every weekend, every weekend, kids are dying, drowning over there. You wonder why it's happening? Because they're having fun. That's why it's happening. God damn it. This motherfucker wasn't over here trying to show off, having fun. Trying to show off, having fun. Diving off the shallow end because if he wasn't having fun, he was being alert. He would have seen, oh shit, the four feet. Let me walk over there to the eight feet. And then let me try to show off. You see? That's alertness. That's not having fun. You gotta be alert. You dumbass. Oh my god. That's scary though. That's very scary. Uh, luckily, this guy did, uh, for all, all of us who follow him on so social media, decided to uh, pretty much let us know he's okay. And how does he show us? Like a beast! Working out like a legend. Look, motherfucker, you ain't stopping my motherfucking ass. No. No fucking drowning. I was resuscitated by two hot cabana boys, some waiters. They fucking resuscitated me. And now I'm back. And I'm working out every day. I gotta get me one of those balls, fellas. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna emulate this man. Look at him. He's beautiful. He's even the red color, too. I think he's even, like, more brown than me. God damn it. Wow. I wonder what he eats every day. I can tell you what I eat. Aw, oh, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> All right, all right, enough of uh, Zac Efron and fucking recovering like a beast, motherfucker. <sighs> but since we are talking about pretty boys, we're going to talk about the pretty man. None other than Leonardo DiCaprio. Was over there in Ibiza in the Spains with one of his young hotties over there. We'll talk about her in a little bit. And where he felt a burning sensation on his lower right buttocks. And he got out of the water in pain. And his assistant quickly went. Because that's what he pays him for. And that's what I would do. But I mean, I wouldn't have that motherfucker. The motherfucker I would have. Motherfucker would be wearing a Speedo. Okay? If we're going to be in Ibiza in Spain... You're being my assistant. You're in a speedo, motherfucker. No shirt on either. And a little bow tie. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyways, the assistant goes over there to check on them. Make sure. We'll check. Check. Check me, Reginald. Check to see what is wrong. And uh, apparently, it was a jellyfish stung him when he was swimming in the seas over there in Ibiza and shit. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, it hurt a lot. It really hurt him a lot. And he almost fucking fired that guy. And everyone, all the crew, he was going to throw a fit. He was going to throw a big fit. Uh, but then he remembered that he's there with a 26-year-old hottie. Vittoria Seretti. Oh, my God. <sighs> Leonardo DiCaprio with his 26 year old model girlfriend from Spain. These uh, little girls, man. 
<laughs> I swear to God. Oh my God. I just feel like even if I had the money, I don't think I could. It's so easy if you have the money. Look at it. Look at this man. Look at this pervert. It's so easy if you have the money. Uh, but I don't even think I could do it. I uh, just, uh, just, just, God damn it. <laughs> Cheers to Leo! Ah, uh, he's all of our hero. He's all of our hero. Alright, uh, but here's one for the boys! Oh, uh, yeah! For the motherfucking boys! Because, fuck Ibiza and fuck Spain over here in the motherfucking, uh, I don't even know, the hemisphere. On our side of the fucking world, all right? Fuck you Europeans over here in the Americas. They celebrated Carnaval. And you know, Rihanna loves Carnaval and she's always there and shit. But this year, Rihanna showed up with some extra pals, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at that thickness. This is a woman who has just had two children and says, I ain't going to fucking get a liposuction. I ain't going to work out. I'm just going out there with my lumps and my humps and I am going to fucking strut like a peacock. Wow. Wow. And there's a big fucking difference between Rihanna pre-pregnancies and Rihanna post-pregnancies. Just want to say. And they're both nice. I'm not going to lie. They're both very, very nice. Very nice. But I like me current Rihanna a lot. I ain't going to lie. I like me current Rihanna a lot. And you know what? God bless her because I think more celebrities should be like this instead of start trying to starve themselves and shit. Just let your body be what it's supposed to be and shit. These are the women we see every day in reality. These, the women at your job, this is what they look like. The women at the store, this is what they look like. All right. This is where you go out in real life. This is what the women really look like. Because this is something that costs a lot of money and a very horrible diet to maintain. And uh, when you want the money and you want the fame, you put up with it. And you do the drugs, too. The drugs help a lot. The drugs help a lot. Yeah, that's why they do them, you know? You look good when you're doing the drugs. Oh, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. But cheers to Rihanna and her gorgeous fucking beautiful body. Cheers to thick women. You know what we like on this channel. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm done you, with your weekly pop culture breakdown. We're going to move it in to the motherfucking comic book nerd shit. Oh, and this week we're going to start it off by saying that Borderlands is probably going to end up to be the biggest failure of all time, even worse than the Marvels, because apparently it did premiere at first at 0% in the Rotten Tomatoes when it was just the critics. And then in one day's total time, it changed from 0% to 4%. Because all of a sudden, because, you know, at first, for the first couple of days, up until the movies actually released, they only let the critics fucking uh, leave reviews. They're certified critics that got passes to see it before. 
Everyone else, the audience, doesn't leave the reviews till the Friday. I can tell you the reviews for the Friday today. The audience is at exactly 50% the last time I checked. It was at 50%. That's the audience. The audience is mixed with it. Half and half. Um, this went from 0 to 4% in one day. And it was literally because one... One... One fucking comment. Out of all these top critics, one comment suddenly decided to say, I like this movie. And guess who it was, my friends? Oh my god. It was none other than Grace fucking Randolph. Oh, well, well. Well, well, well. Well. Grace Randolph was the one person out of all the certified critics who said, I like this movie. Oh my God. None other than what's he who should not be his name's fucking wife. God damn it. I should have known some bullshit like this was going to happen because she's a fucking dumbass. Look at her review. I'm going to try to imitate her. I'm not as good as what's, what's his name, but I'll try to do. I've never played these games, but I've got a kick out of Blanchett starring in a movie like this. I'm not good, all right? And doing a great job. I do wish the script had been adjusted a bit better to accommodate her age. Uh, wow. I <laughs> This is the first time I read this. I am 100% going to agree with that one line. That's it. I'm going to agree with that. But I'll get into it in my review in a little bit. Blanchett fans will enjoy this. Not sure about anyone else. Fuck you, Grace Randolph. Because she liked it. And because of her, they brought the, the tomato score up. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, so, yes. The critics hate it. Now, I always say, I don't take anything the critics like because anything the critics hate, usually the audience ends up liking. That's usually the case. Especially when it comes to superhero and sci-fi type of stuff. The critics are always, because they're nerds and they're not the type of nerds that like comic books or fun stuff. They're the type of nerds that like math and science and bullshit. And drama. And gay stuff. And lesbians. Stuff like that. My non-binaryism. Confused people. Shits of that matter. Disabled. Whatever you want to label them as. I don't know. I don't like labels. I call them all humans. But motherfuckers want to say whatever. Some people say disabled. Disabled. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to call them. Right? And they're humans to me. To me. We're all humans. All right. But some of these motherfuckers... You know, they, 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 they don't like it. I don't know. Um, 4%, whatever. The audience is mixed. It's 50%. It's 50%. So, where does the son of man land on this? All right. I'm going to play it in the background just to be playing it. But, uh, and I'll talk about the movie in a little bit. But straight up, I'm going to come out first and say, I know absolutely nothing. Nothing about Borderlands. I know it's a video game, and I know that the graphics make my eyes hurt because it looks like a fucking drawing, but 3D, but it's outlined. I just don't like that style. It hurts my eyes. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I don't know nothing about it. Therefore, any of the stuff they explained regarding lore, characters, their names, Shit like that. 
I don't know if, if it's real. I don't know if it's faithful. I don't. I wish. I, I, I don't know if any of you in the chat, if anybody knows anything about Borderlands and has seen the movie. I mean, let me know if it was faithful to it. I don't play the video game. I know nothing about it. So I can't say that any of these characters resembled anything or that it was exactly like the fucking thing it was supposed to be. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what is the movie like? It's kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy. But lamer. With Actually lamer with a little bit better special effects, but still lamer. Because it's trying too hard, is the way I see it. Um, the story is, is basically, is basically this. The, this is a reality where there used to be some ancient beings. I forget what they're called, because I, they, I just don't give a fuck about it. I forget what they're called, but there's some ancient beings and shit, okay? And then they were the smartest and had technology, but one day they all disappeared or died or went away. Nobody knows. They just, they're not there anymore. But they left behind all uh, some broken artifacts. And so by the humans, by studying that, that's how they got technology and that's how they became the civilization that they are now. And the only thing they know from the secrets from the technology is that these ancient people left a vault with all their knowledge and technology. And the vault is hidden on a planet named Pandora. And ever since then, everyone's always been searching for the vault in that planet. And that planet is basically the worst. It's a garbage planet and it's all desert and wasteland and irradiated. And there's crazy people because of all the radiation. The people that live there go crazy and they turn into cannibals or some ass like that. And they're, they're strong or some bullshit. I don't know. I don't know if this is relating to the game. I don't know if that's what the game is. I know nothing about it. I'm just telling you what the movie is. The basic premise. Well, there is a company, an evil corporation called Atlas. And they fucking want to find the vault and open it. And they know that, that the only way to open the vault is that the, you need to find a daughter of the fucking race of the people... That built the civilization. Only that per only uh, somebody with the DNA of that person. So that they found uh, uh, blood of one of the ancient people, and he started cloning kids. And so this little girl with the bunny ears, she's uh, a clone, and she's supposed to be the key to open the vault. But this is what I don't understand, because the movie starts off with the little girl in a jail cell. And what's his name? Uh, fucking, I was going to say Chris Rock. What's this motherfucker's name? I don't even remember this guy's name because this movie is fucking pisses me off anyway. So much. God damn it. I'm going to hate myself for not knowing this. I'm going to have to pull this shit out because uh, also the fucking uh, the shroom mushroom caps, the fucking... Uh, 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 we don't, we're not a sponsor, but the caps, mushroom caps by Good Morals, uh, twists just hit me. So I'm a little bit confused as to what I'm doing, but don't worry. Uh, movie cast. I'm pulling this up right now as we speak. So I'm going to be able to tell you what, who I'm talking about. Kevin Hart. You see, you see, I'm so fucking, fucking high and drunk. I don't even know what I'm saying. Fucking Kevin Hart shows up. And rescues the little girl out of the prison and says, your dad hired me and we're going to rescue you. The dad is not really her dad. It's the bad guy who created her in a lab. But I'm all like, why is she even missing? Try they never explained that. Okay, I know I, you haven't seen the movie, so you don't understand. But if you see the movie and it, the movie ends and you think about it, and you're going to be like, why did it, it didn't make sense? But anyways, yeah. So the beginning didn't make any sense when you really, really hard thinkly think about it. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, so he takes the little girl. Kevin Hart runs away with the little girl. And this crazy guy that he breaks out of prison, the one with the mask. He's actually badass. And I thought he was all CGI. But I, I looked at some of the videos on YouTube. This is a real motherfucker. I think he's like an MMA or some box. 
This guy's big, and he's ripped as fuck. I thought it was CGI, but there's actually a human that looks like that. That's scary. Um, they just put a mask on him. It makes him look even scarier, but this guy, he's built like a crazy guy. Uh, he's real. He's not fake. That's no CGI. That fucker's real. So I'm gonna say, man, that fucker's real. His body's exactly like that. He's real. Um, but anyways, so Kate Blanchett then gets hired by the dad, the guy for the corporation who who created this little girl, to go, hey, go save my daughter. And so she goes, and Kate Blanchett's all like, oh, I hate this planet because I I'm actually from this planet. This planet's a shithole. But she has to go back there to find this little girl, so she hates it and shit. And, uh, oh, some ass happens. A lot of ass happens. So I'm going to put it like that. But basically, I don't know, when they get to the vault, the little girl is not able to open it. And they find out that Kate Blanchett can open it because she's the daughter, a descendant from the ancients. And and then she gets Phoenix, Dark Phoenix powers. And that's where you see her with fire, with wings and shit. And she flies around and, and then they go open the vault. And this is where I don't understand what happens here. But they go into the vault and the guy's all like, I'm going to kill this little girl. And But I don't know, Kate Blanchett has like God powers. And, uh, and they fucking... They tell him, you're going to stay here with, with this shit. And some tentacles come out. And they fucking take him away. And you're like, wait. So what was in the vault? Was there like, what was the secret? I don't understand. None of it. And at the end, they're all just sitting there like, oh, we're a family. And shit and ass. And then the little girls, please fly into the air and blow up. And she's like, god damn it. But she does it anyways. And she's a phoenix in the sky. And that's how the movie ends. Oh, oh my god. And I know this is because I know nothing of the game. And I don't know if this is the game or not. But that's the fucking story. And it's fucking nonsensical, forgettable, and stupid as fuck. Is the only way I could explain it. I don't know nothing of Borderlands. Maybe if I knew something about the game. But apparently, because the audience is still half and half. Apparently, maybe the geeks also don't think it's fucking... I don't know. I have to go and look on YouTube to see if the geeks like this. The, the Borderland fans. Do they like this? I don't know. I... <sighs> look, let me just put it like this. Because it's got good actors. Kate Blanchett is good. This little girl's good. I think this little girl, I mean, once she gets away from these types of movies, uh, and I hope her agents do better to get her away from these types of movies, um, I think she will do really good in Hollywood. She's really good. Uh, this big guy, I mean, he wore a mask the whole time, so I didn't know any facial em emotions. He's just, it's a big guy, and he's ripped as fuck. And Kevin Hart's Kevin Hart. But he doesn't do Kevin Hart in this movie. Kevin Hart's not really... The way he is, silly. He's not in this movie. Not, not, he's not in this movie. Jamie Lee Curtis is... All, it's, it's okay. I mean, she's there to serve her purpose and shit. Kate Blanchett's just being a badass. She's a little too old. That's what I felt was a part of it. Because also, like... At first, when she runs into Jamie Lee Curtis, I thought it was going to be revealed that Jamie Lee Curtis was her mom. But it turns out that Jamie Lee Curtis was some lady that the mom left her in charge. Like, take care of my baby because the mom was going to die or some ass. Some bullshit like that. But instead of taking care of her, she sent her away and Jamie Lee Curtis kept searching for the vault. And that's why this chick hates her because you were supposed to take care of me and raise me and you went after the vault. He goes, every idiot in the galaxy goes after the vault and nobody finds... That's the, the thing about the galaxy is that everybody's been searching for the vault for years and years and people go and they fight and they die here in this planet because nobody, nobody ever finds the vault. It's shit. But they find it in this movie. Coincidentally, yeah. For your entertainment purposes, they find the vault. Um, I guess, I mean, if that's what the game is, then I guess it's okay. 
I'll put it like this because I don't want to be an asshole. The special effects are really good. And I say, when I watch these movies, I always take into accommodation that this is not me in the theaters watching it in good quality. This is me watching it from somebody taking a HD camera recording it in a theater. So, even though it is pretty good quality and the audio is alright, uh, the Deadpool one was perfect. Well, I still have that version. Ah, uh, yeah, it's perfect. Um, anyways, it, the, the, difference, the difference, the main difference is, is that I can tell that this is... I can tell whether or not the effects are good or not. Because it's still good enough quality that I can be like... And I can tell you that the, the special effects in this movie are good. They're not like in Marvel that looks fake. Because I can tell you the Deadpool Wolverine. And I didn't... I failed to mention it because I was so excited about how good that movie was and how fun it was. I, I just talked about how good it was that I didn't I felt to mention in Deadpool Wolverine that the special effects and the CGI look fucking fake, especially when Wolverine was wearing his fucking mask. And I hate that I didn't mention it when I was reviewing it, but I will not dis any of the special effects of this movie at all. I'll tell you like that. And that's me watching it in a shitty quality from cam ver a cam version. The effects on this are good. I don't know what studio did this, but this isn't like a Marvel movie that obviously rushes or gets a shitty studio to do their special effects. This was good special effects. It's just a damn shame that they are... Uh, it's just... You know what it is? It, like as I said, because I don't want to bash it. It's not a bad movie. This is what it is. It's a forgettable movie. I don't think you'll regret seeing it. I don't think you'll leave saying that was badass. But you won't be angry that you watched it. It's a it's a good ride if you're I mean whatever. It's a good movie. You know, it's it's not a bad movie, but it's not an amazing movie neither. It's not to caliber to what it's not to caliber to what we're used to. We're used to fucking amazing movies. We are, man. In this day and age, we're used to fucking amazing movies. We are. We're spoiled as fuck. And this is not to that caliber. This is like 90s. This is like if you put fucking The Phantom. Or or 19 or fucking Batman. Joe Schumacher Batman. You know what I'm saying? It's still a, a movie that you can watch and not hate and be entertained. But it's you're going to forget about it. After you watch it. It's not something that you're going to hold dear in your heart. So it's not a bad movie. It's just not amazing at all. Uh, so, yeah. I'll, that's that's just all I'll say about fucking Borderlands. And that's just my, my plain and honest truth about it. Um, I don't... What do I rate it from 1 to 10? A six and a half. A six and a half. I'll just say it like that. From one to ten, I'll give it a six and a half. Uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, a lot of it's cliche. I will say there, to me, there it was one annoying fucking part of the whole movie. And to me, it was J Jack Black, the stupid robot. Um, very annoying. Very fucking annoying it just it's not sometimes it's just not even saying anything funny it's just not shutting the fuck up and that's the truth it's just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and, talking. and i don't know if they thought that was supposed to be funny but it's not it's not so i don't like jack black's stupid fucking dumb democratic i love biden robot I don't like it. I don't. Uh, but that's my only complaint. Uh, I don't know. I would I would wait until it's on digital and then fucking download it. Don't pay for it. Download it off of one of these sites. But wait, wait until it's on digital. That's my final uh, my final verdict on it. Cheers. It's very forgettable. It's very forgettable. 
Like I said, I can't say, oh, it was the worst two hours ever. No, it, was, it really wasn't. You know, the special effects were good to look at. And and when I when it comes out on digital, I'm going to watch it again because I liked seeing it in good quality. Um, I loved seeing Godzilla Minus One in good quality and dubbed. They finally made the dubbed English version. Oh, I love watching it in good quality and dubbed. It was perfect here at home, naked, right there on my couch. Nobody bothered me while I ate fried chicken. It was badass. Uh, anyways. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So just wait till it's on digital and download it and watch it, man. I mean, it's not a bad movie, but if you want to get high or drunk, you just want to see special effects and just turn off your brain for nonsense because it's fucking dumb. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could watch it. Why the fuck not? You could, you could see worse, honestly. Anyways, let's get into my review of the finale of House of the Dragon. And I'm going to say it was the lamest, weirdest finale. The main shit that I want to quickly go into. And I'll try to finish this fast because I know only the cut likes this and appreciates me talking about George R. R. Martin's motherfucking lazy asses genius work of art but the house of dragon finale for season motherfucking two was the lamest weirdest finale ever nothing happened they just kind of progressed the story a little bit but what i say about the weirdest is that damon so this whole time, he's been pissing me off with Damon's story, and he's over there, he's having dreams and all this ass, and this fucking bitch of a witch finally tells him you're okay to touch the fucking willow tree or whatever, this tree that bleeds, you can touch it now. For whatever reason, and he also sees a goat, man, like it looks like a fucking, uh, I'm not showing it right now, but it looks like a fucking, I don't even know, what do they call the, the goat, the goat person, you know, it's just like... He follows it, but then he fucking touches the tree, and the tree bleeds. And when he touches it, he basically sees the future. And he sees the fucking Three-Eyed Raven and Jon Snow. And then he sees the fucking White Walkers and dead dragons, because they're all going to die. All the dragons are going to die. So he sees the future. And then uh, he sees fucking um, himself dying right here. That's him fucking dying. He sees the three eggs with Daenerys, my Khaleesi's. But it's not her. God damn it. I wish it was her. It was somebody else doing this. But she's there. She also, he's seen the future and shit. And he realizes um, that this is, this is not in the book. I know it is not. Because none of this was supposed to be in the book. All these visions. That's why I said, what are they doing with Damien? But now it makes sense. So this is why he decides to join his wife instead of trying to overthrow her. Is of these visions. That's how they're fixing it in the because in the book they didn't explain why he did help her. I'm mean, I'll spoil it in a little bit, but he helps her take over and get the kingdom back. Um but he sees these visions. But Rhaenyra goes over there and be like, oh no, so now you have all this army and none of the when she walks in there and she's the queen. None of them even move out of the way. Give her any respect. And he goes up to her. And she tells him, so this is what you've been up to. And he's all like, yeah, I've raised an army and they're loyal to me. And she'll, she tells him, and who are you loyal to? And so she fucking le leans in and tells him, I had all these visions. And I saw the future. And... The, your, my brother was right about the darkness that's coming and it's like the White Walkers and what he told you was right and whoever he chose was supposed to be the true heir and he tells her and he chose you and so all of a sudden fucking Damon bends the knee to fucking Rhaenyra in front of all his fucking army and men and so everyone bends the knee to her. And so the book, I'll give them that. I'll give the showrunners that. The book fixed it by tying it together. Not, not the book. The show fixed it by tying it together. 
Because I've never read the book, but from the story everyone always tells that I've, because I've seen hundreds of videos on YouTube. I've even seen some of people actually reading. Right now, I'm currently uh, listening to a guy reading Aegon Targaryen and all of his conquests from the first, because they're going to make that show. So I'm, I'm hearing this nerd read it all, and he's doing a pretty good job reading. He knows how to pronounce all the words really good, so I like it. But anyways... I know this was something they added here to tie it in to why it was he decided to join her because he wanted to overthrow her. So that that was kind of cool. And Allison shows up and tries to fucking tell Rhaenyra. And I know this is totally made up. This was not. And this is another reason the book is just trying to... The, the show is... I keep saying the book. The show is just trying to weave a closer knitted story. More cohesive with the characters. But in here, they're doing where Allison is coming and telling Rhaenyra, I don't want this war to continue. And if you fucking keep me and my daughter safe, the queen and her children, we can go just leave and live a normal life. And we'll, we'll I'll open the gates to the kingdom to you. And Rhaenyra tells her, and what about my brother, the king, your 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 son? And she goes, well, can you let him go? And she's all like, you know what this is like. You know what the game is, the Game of Thrones. The usurper, the guy who took the... He has to be killed and executed in front of everyone to show that I am the, I am the true leader. That's the way it goes. That's the way it's been for centuries. Are you willing to let me kill your son, my brother? And so she's all like. She doesn't say yes, but she's just like, yeah, she agrees. And so that's not in the fucking book. So now they're saying that the betrayal, the reason why Rhaenyra and, and, and Damon are going to take over King's Landing is because Allison is going to allow it. In the book, all it says is that the Greens marched towards Harrenhal, and while they did that, they abandoned Harrenhal. Everyone abandoned it, and to trick them, and they headed towards King's Landing, and that's how they took the kingdom back. More stuff happens after that, obviously. Um, but the next thing that should have happened in the story here should have been the Battle of the Gullet, which is the Battle of C. Which is like what I told you what I thought they were going to end the season at. In the Battle of the Sea, they're transporting Rhaenyra's younger kids. May Magor and Aegon. Aegon the Third, And they're transporting them by sea. And they get captured by the sisters. Those fucking ships that... Okay, so there's another guy. If you saw this episode, I don't, I don't have footage. But if you saw this episode, there's another... The Lannister guy fucked a bunch of fucking Amazonian bitches. And now they're on his side riding in the sea with a bunch of ships. It's badass. He got to fuck a bunch of bitches. Is he getting pregnant too? That was the deal. He had to get the, all the chicks pregnant. Ah, yeah. I don't get into it. I didn't have any footage. They didn't show anything anyway, some pussies. It was just a side story that was happening. But all those ships are the ones that capture those kids. But one of them escapes in the dragon. And they shoot the dragon with arrows. And the dragon gets back to Dragonstone. And when it gets there, the dragon dies. Because it's it's wounded. But the kid makes it there. And so then, Jaceres gets on his dragon to go get... A Aegon, oh no, Magor, because Aegon made it back. Ma Magor, he went to go get the other little brother. And he goes into to go back into the ships. And when he gets out there, they shoot him with uh, with harpoons. And they pull the dragon down to the ocean. And the dragon drowns. And when when Jaceres comes up, they all shoot him with arrows. And Jaceres dies. That's the air. Fucking Rhaenyra's. And I thought that's how the season was going to end. Because that's the cliffhanger. But no. The season ends. And, it, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool. But it pisses me off. But it ends with the greens marching. And then they finally show Darren. The one green Targaryen they haven't showed in the whole season. 
who's been living over there in the high towers. He has a blue dragon. And this guy is not like Aegon and is not like fucking Damon oh, or Amund. He's not crazy and he's not evil. He's actually nice and all proper. And uh, and we see him with the armies. So he's finally going to come out in season three. I don't know what actor they're going to get, but he better fucking be really gay. He, that guy better be really fucking gay. That's the way I've always pictured that guy being. And a badass. He has to be a badass, but also has to be gay. That's the way I see it. Really, really fancy. You know, like, I'm better than you and I'm a pretty boy. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dragon's blue. Bitch. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's the way he's got to be. That's the way I always saw him. And we see Damon with his armor going to get on Seraxes with all of his army below him. And then you see the sisters on the ships. And also, oh, they're changing the story. They're supposed to be a, a black, a black girl. A poor black girl who tames this dragon. This dragon's named Sheep Herder or Sheep Stealer because it eats sheep and it's a wild dragon. But they're having um, Rhea Tamer. Rhea's supposed to have a dragon that already hatched that she has and it's a baby dragon and it's pink that we already saw. That's her moon dragon. And she's not supposed to go into battle. They're deleting the character of, I don't even know what this girl is. But she's not even a Tigerian. She's just a just a kid, a, a beggar. But she tames a wild dragon. And because she tames a wild dragon, they recruit her to be on the black side. And what ends up happening is that Damon, Renera, the queen's husband, starts having an affair with this little girl, with this little black girl. And uh, Damon, for oh, a few months, runs away with her. And they have an affair. And then they go back into battle. And when Damon fights Amond, his nephew, and they both supposedly die, the book leaves it open where they said they never found Damon's body. And this little girl with her dragon, sheep stealer, ran away. They flew away. They left the war. And no one ever saw them again. And so the rumor was that Damon survived the fight with his nephew and ran away with his mistress to live in solitude, far away from everyone, from Westeros, and never heard from again. That's in the book. They're not going to do this here, because Damon is not going to sleep with his daughter. Because that's who's taming this dragon. His fucking daughter is the one taming the dragon, and they're not going to do that extreme story. With it, I think they just they said, "Ah, oh, that's enough with all this sex and shit," and they took it off. So no, they're changing that. That was weird, because Rhea is the one who's gonna tame the dragon, and this is a uh, Otto Hightower is in a cage, trapped somewhere. I don't know this. None of the fucking videos I saw on YouTube ever talked about this guy being in jail. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Oh. And then we also see fucking Laris taking Aegon away. This is going to be cool. Because at the end, and I'm pretty sure at the end of the third season. At the end of the third season, we're going to see that fucking Aegon and Laris and Sunfire, the dragon that everyone thinks is dead, still alive. All half burnt, but still alive. They're going to be... Uh, housed up in Dragonstone because all these motherfuckers end up fucking abandoning it because they moved to King's Landing. So this guy goes back to their to their old castle to stay there, and that's how it ends to a little montage. You know, you they was eight episodes for season two, eight episodes. God damn it! First season was ten episodes, and it was a damn good first season. It had the perfect mix. Of sex and gore and violence and good story and characters and development. Ten episodes. You even had a time jump where you went from Millie Alcock being a little girl to this little les to this older lesbian hottie, uh, Rhaenyra, over here being a fucking uh, queen. So you did see the difference. I mean, obviously they casted different actors. They're different ages. There was a time jump in it and shit. Um. Uh, so yeah. 
Uh, but... God damn it. Eight episodes? If you would have done ten episodes for season two, you could have included the ba the Battle of the Gullet. And the Battle of the Gullet could have been two episodes. The first episode where the sisters and all the ships capture the kids. And then the second episode where Jaceris goes and attempts to save his little brother only to get killed. And that's where you leave it at the fucking cliffhanger. Are you telling me that you're going to have a cliffhanger one or two episodes into season three? A cliffhanger? A, 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 a peak? The peak should have been the end! You idiots! The Battle of the Gullet should have been the last, the last two episodes. I don't know why they ended it in eight. And you know what pisses me off also? Is that we're gonna have to wait two fucking years until we see the next season. I was in the Game of Thrones fans back in the day. I got into it later. But if this is what fans went through every time a season ended, that they had to wait two years until the next one came out, oh my fucking God, I feel for you. Um, I, 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 I might be dead. I might not live another two fucking years to see the next fucking shit. All I have is all the YouTube videos I've seen. God damn it. And I know they're not going to do it exactly like Because already I can spot the changes. I've seen enough videos that I know this whole story of House of Dragon. I know how it ends. And I know what happens even afterwards. I know it. Because I've seen enough fucking lore videos. I know it. And so I can spot the differences. I genuinely can. Um... And I'm not going to get to see it because because this is they're taking too damn long. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> One thing that's coming out pretty fast, which I was actually surprised because they're actually still filming this. But they were able to show something for the Hedge Knight, the Seven Kingdoms. A quick little snippet trailer of some footage. And it's like Sir Duncan and they show little Aegon. This would make him Aegon the Fourth. Targaryen, he shaved his head bald. He does look like a little egghead. Little, that's what they call him, egg. Um, and Duncan, pretty tall. And he looks like um, Brienne of Tarth. And shit. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It really does. Uh, I honestly think this whole fucking... Uh, this could be told in one season. If, if if this gets really popular, that people like it, they can continue on to the other books. But this, the, the main story of the fucking Hedge Knight, it's just one season. It could be one season. It's just the tournament. You can continue after the tournament. There is story after the tournament. But the main story, the highlight of it is the tournament. And it's the beginning. And that's what this is going to be. It's going to be one season. And if it's a hit and people fall in love with these characters, they'll continue it and they'll show what happens afterwards. They'll show them going on adventures throughout the Seven Kingdoms before Aegon finally decides to be king. Because before, because Aegon's next in line. Aegon, this little boy, is next in line. And he decides not to be king. He says, I, I want to be continue being a squire and we're going to continue... Uh, Fixing the seven kingdoms like they need knights. We need fucking, you know, justice police So they, they have adventures for a while Before he comes back and he becomes king the little boy because he starts learning about what it's like to be out there So he becomes a good king because he learns about the common people and shit Yeah, yeah Blood Raven. Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be good shit, bro. I can't wait to see the tournament, bro. It's going to be badass. Um, I'm curious to see what other actors... Well, not really, because this is all going to be like Australians and Britons and Irish motherfuckers. So, um, it's not going to be nobody I know, as I'm going to say. Uh, but they do, they've do. they done a pretty good job casting all these shows. I'm not going to lie. Uh, everything looks and feels really authentic and their voices and ass... It's really good, you know? It's really good. It's really good. 
So, uh, I look forward to this, thankfully. Even though we have to wait two years, 2027, for season three of House of Dragon. It better be fucking ten episodes season three. I'm going to be pissed if it's another eight. Ten episodes. And you know what? They better not be lazy. They should film three, season three and season four in one go. Motherfuckers, they make us wait two years. Sons of bitches. Save some money. Pay everyone the same rate and make them work twice as long. You dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. Everybody works a whole year, then you're off for the next six. Because we have enough footage for ten. Ah, cheers! <laughs> Anyways, enough of that ass. Moving on to some real ass. But now, since Marvel and Deadpool have become the number one highest rated R movie of all fucking time, even more than Passion of the Christ, Deadpool, and it's talking about dildos, is more popular than Jesus of Nazareth, apparently, according to the world we live in. But now Sony says, hey, we got to do the same thing. And since we failed at Madam Web, let's try something different with Aaron Taylor Johnson's movie. So Craven the Hunter, who doesn't hunt animals and preserves them, is now rated R for violence and partial nudity because he's not going to be wearing a shirt or shoes. And there are a lot, a lot of fucking pervs out there that like foots. And they fucking masturbate to fucking foot videos stepping on eggshells and chocolate and ass. I even saw somebody stepping on dog shit. You believe somebody jacking off to that? That's pretty fucked up. Anyways, fuck you, Sony. And you're rated our Craven the Hunter. Fucking Aaron Taylor Johnson, you dumbass. You should have never signed up for this stupid shit. You're not even hunting or killing or being a bad guy. You're being, a, oh, let me save the animals. Because a lion bit me and the blood went into my wounds. And now I feel and I talk and talk to the spirit animals and shit. What comic book is that from? Because it ain't for no Spider-Man comic book I've ever read, you idiot. Well, I would fire everybody in your staff, your manager, to that fucking guy who gave you the script and said, Hey, this is going to make you a lot of money. Fuck you. You're in a Sony failure before it even comes out. Nobody's going to see this ass. This is worse than Madam Webb. I remember the fucking memes that somebody said, Hey... I fucking, y'all be careful. I was fucking parked. I, I went to the movies and I parked my car. And somebody fucking, fucking broke in. Like they cracked my window. And I went over there. And they did, luckily they didn't take anything. But they left two tickets to Madam Webb. <laughs> I was like, y'all motherfuckers. You think graded R Craven the Hunter? Let me protect the animals instead of hunting them. Let me save the animals. Let me fucking not hunt animals. Be a vegan. A conservative. And shit. You think that's gonna... A rated R version of that is gonna be better? Than, than real Craven the Hunter hunting and killing animals and Spider-Man. And by the way, there's no fucking Spider-Man in his ass. That made no sense. Another movie like Madam Web that didn't have no Spider-Man. <sighs> Alcohol. It's good for one thing. It's good to forgetting about shit like this. God damn it. You know, when I was a kid, when I was young, and I used to have dreams. I used to think about, I could be Craven the Hunter. I had a lot of hair and shit. 
I said, I don't need to wear a vest like this fucking pussy over here wearing a vest with, with bushy shit. It would just be my hair. And my hair looks like that shit. It'd be all over me. You know what I'm saying? No, no. No, 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 no. Nothing anymore. Because we're going to get vegan craving the hunter over here. Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's not his fault. He doesn't read comic books. He doesn't know anything. But he thinks because he was kick ass that he's going to kick ass in this ass. Well, I'll tell you what, Johnson. It's going to be ass for sure. It's going to be ass for sure. We're done with his ass, by the way. But speaking of major failures and major idiots of the industry is none other than Marvel Disney. Because the nerds on Twitter, and this must just be a might be just a bunch of fucking lies, because these motherfuckers do anything for clout. But since we have nothing else to talk about, because there was a lot of bullshit news this week, and a lot of motherfuckers, like all your favorite celebrities and YouTube stars, recycle news and talk about the same shit that's already been talked about. And we're not that kind of channel, so fuck you, we're not recycling news. So this is all I got. But it's true. Partially. It's mostly. It's, about, it's a good percentage of it. Don't worry about it. Just take it as fact. But these nerds are not reporting that Disney Marvel Studios has already spent over $19.5 million on Eyes of Wakanda. An animated Fucking show for Disney Plus. <sighs> Idiots. If you're spending more than $20 million on a cartoon, you're a dumbass. You're hiring the wrong people. I could make a cartoon. Give me $1 million and I'll make you a hit cartoon. And I won't do any of the work. I'll just go down to the local college, go to the f guys who are about to graduate who do fucking animation, hire three or four of them, pay them 30 grand each, and we'll make a good cartoon show. We don't need $20 million. In fact, give me all the $20 million. I'll pay them each 30 grand each for that first job of their lives. They'll do a fantastic job because they're excited and they're, they want to work for Disney. And we'll be a hit. And I'll get to keep the rest of the millions of dollars without having to pay anybody or nothing. Fucking, they're just throwing money away over there like a bunch of idiots. And it's no wonder they're going bankrupt. God damn it. $20 million for a cartoon series. Really? Really? It costs that much to animate? I, I highly doubt it. God damn it. Especially if they're doing a computer. One guy on a computer can do fucking half of that shit instead of having a bunch of, a, like a whole team of motherfuckers drawing it. You know what I'm saying? So it's even lazier. And you're saying it costs even more because it's lazier? And it made no sense. You're just throwing money away on useless fucking pricks. You fucking idiots. This show's going to be a failure. Watch. I was going to watch this ass. This is fucking pissing me off. Anyways, let's get into some some Marvel Marvel spoilers ass and probably the only relevant news this week that I'm going to share. All right. Because there was like I said, there's some people trying to put news up there, but it's like they said that last month. Oh, we somebody already said that two months ago or this is recycled like they're trying to trick people. Just click on oh, in case they forgot. Let's make a video and then put up put a new title or some and it's like I'm not going to do that ass. All right. So even though there's not a lot of comic book shit, I tried to get the most relevant ass. Is all I'm trying to say. 
All right, there's a lot of ass out there, but not all of it is good or relevant. That's all it is. That's the facts. Don't get fooled by fake ass. Anyways. Ah, uh, new rumors or details supposedly from these leakers that end up being wrong most of the time, but we still say their ass, and sometimes their asses are good. And we lick them, and we love them, and the spoilers are real. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Anyways, they're coming out now, and they're saying that the new spoilers for the Fantastic Four for the MCU is that they are actually from the MCU. The backstory is that they went to space in the MCU. They got sucked into a wormhole or something. And when they came out on the other side or some portal, they were in another reality. And then they went in their spaceship, they went down to Earth. And that Earth is different. Um, and so they have powers. When they went through through realities, they got powers through the radiation. And so they landed in this new world with powers. And so now they, they've been living this whole time in this alternate world that is not where they're from. But they've been living there because they're stuck there. And so they made a home there. And Reed and Sue had a baby there. So we're going to see them where before, when they got there, we're going to see them when they're there and they have a baby. And then we're going to flash forward and the baby's already a kid and he's Franklin Richards. And they're all, you know, whatever. Not a team anymore. In the more modern present day, they're not a team anymore. They're all doing their own thing anymore. But we're going to see three versions of them. We're going to see the version before. Then we're going to see the fucking version uh, when they're a team for a little bit where they fight the mole man. And then we're going to see the version where they're, they're older and the kid's grown up and they're not a team. Everyone's just doing their own thing. Here is the main plot of the story. Galactus. Uh, okay, so these guys go out on a mission because it's leaked to the public because it's a, it's a government secret who they are. They're celebrities, but it's still a government secret. But somebody leaks it to the public that they're not from this reality. That they're pretty much aliens. And so the public starts turning on them. And so Reed tells them, like, we've been here long enough and... We need to really try to... Because they've been trying, but they don't know how. But they've been... We need to try to fucking go back to where, we, where we're from. Because obviously we don't belong here. And, and the people don't react... Re, are not reacting good to us anymore. So... They go into space. And in space, they ran into the Silver Surfer. And it's not the Silver Surfer. It's Nova. And this is where I'm confused. It might not even be Nova. It might be Silver Surfer. But it's going to be a girl. Silver Surfer. But hopefully Kim Feige doesn't piss off the nerds. He makes it Nova. So we accept it. Even though we want Silver Surfer. We'll accept it. Whatever. I think I know what he's doing. But hopefully it's Nova. It's Nova. Not Silver Surfer. But it's going to be a female version. Of Galactus Herald. And that version tells them Galactus is coming there's nothing you can do and I'm just here to warn you and prepare for your demise and so they go back to earth and they all come to the conclusion that it's all like there's nothing we can do because Reed is the smartest person ever and so all his hypothesis and shit and he says there's nothing we can do the only reasonable solution is for us four to f fucking leave this reality and go back to where we're from. Because this this world where we're from, it's going to die because this thing's coming. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. There's nothing. Nothing. So we, we have to go back to where we're from. And Reed tells them. And they all agree. It's true. We do have to go. 
It turns out that Galactus is actually dying. And the way... Uh, I, I don't know. They, there's not clear who, how or why. But he's dying. And when the Silver Surfer or Nova goes back to Galactus, they... Because we don't know if it's a, a man or a female. They tell Galactus... They're not even from this universe, and they're 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 finding a way to get back to theirs. And since Galactus is dying, he says, "That's how I can fucking stay alive if I go to another universe and feed off of them, because I'm dying in this one." And so that's why Galactus is going to fucking find the Fantastic Four, not to eat. The earth or destroy them to fucking follow them to wherever they're going. And the Fantastic Four are gonna go to the MCU. And Galactus is gonna follow them. Which is insane. Because this is a little bit like the first Secret Wars. Because the very first Secret Wars from the 1980s, Galactus was in it. And even Doctor Doom was trying to control him. And so I feel like Kevin Feige is gonna take parts. It's not gonna be... I, I was thinking, and everyone also online was thinking, this is gonna be like the brand new Secret Wars with Battleworld and Doctor Doom. No. This is going to be a combination of both Secret Wars. So Kai Feige is not going to... It's going to combine elements. Because he's bringing in Galactus now. If Galactus is now trying to go into the other universe, according to these spoilers, that means that he's going to end up in Secret Wars. And if he ends up in Secret Wars, this is following more of the 1980s Secret Wars than the newer 2000 ones. So Feige is combining both of them. As more spoilers come out, I'll be able to tell you more clearly because I know both of these fucking I have fucking I have uh, I have both of them. I have both arcs, the old one and the new one, the Secret Wars. So I can tell you I can tell you more or less what I think they're going to do. But these are just spoilers that are barely coming out. Very, very interesting how they're introducing the Fantastic Four. If these is, if this, any of this is true. But one thing they are saying is that since Deadpool's universe didn't die, and that world has X Men in it, that world will collide with the MCU in the first incursion. And I think, I keep saying that the incursions, not only going to be those two worlds, but the world that the Fantastic Four currently reside in is also going to crash in at the same time. And so that's the incursion in this story. We're going to see the incursion is going to be those three universes crashing. And so the Fantastic Four are basically the spectators or you could say like the referees like they're idle to the story whereas they're watching what's happening and they're trying to figure out how to stop it at the same time the person an evil person from their universe which i got a feeling will get a little bit of an introduction to in fantastic four maybe an end of credit scene or maybe a little of one or two scenes but we are going to get introduction to RDJ in Fantastic Four. Some s small introduction. That guy at the same time, because he's trying to save his world that he's from, he's also trying to figure out how to stop this. So you're going to have Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom trying to figure out how to stop the three worlds from colliding. Since the worlds are colliding, the MCU Avengers... And the Fox Universe X-Men are going to start fighting each other. Because they're going to realize that the only way that we survive is if we destroy each other. One of them has to be destroyed for the other to survive. And so they start fighting each other. And so we are will, we will get, 
And there's pretty much already confirming this. Avengers versus Fox Universe X-Men. We're getting this. We are going to get this. And we, we're we going to get this. The Avengers versus the Fox Universe X-Men. And it's going to be the same universe that Monica Rambeau landed. That we saw Beast at the end of the Marvels. That's the same universe. And I bet you anything. Gambit that we just saw in Wolverine and uh, Deadpool is going to be in it. I bet you uh, Blade and Electro will be in I bet you they'll all be part of the X-Men of the Fox Universe. Since they already came out already. And they're all going to come out again. And uh, they're going to fight the Avengers. And that's going to be... That's going to be Avengers Doomsday. Avengers Doomsday is secretly Avengers versus X-Men. Because it's the end of the world. The worlds are colliding. And if they don't destroy one another, no one's going to survive. So they're forced to fight each other. And that's what's happening. And at the end of that, Doctor, everything gets destroyed. And Doctor Doom rebuilds everything. Because he ends up getting the power of God or whatever. Uh, and he rebuilds everything. That's where we go into secret war wars. Um, I can tell you that this is looking pretty fucking badass. We're still going to get the next two years of ass. And I'm not playing because the Captain America movie is going to suck. We know that. The Thunderbolts is probably going to suck. Agatha's going to suck. Ironheart. Everything. Everything. And none of it's going to connect. None of it's going to connect. Because they're going to. What they're going to do. And it's obvious. Is that. This event. That the worlds are suddenly crashing into another. It's going to suddenly happen. Everyone's going to be doing their own thing. And, and that's kind of. That's a little kind of smart of them to do it. Everyone's doing their own thing when all of a sudden psh, uh, Deadpool's there or, or Cyclops is there. Who the fuck are you? And psh, they start, people start fighting. Where the fuck did you come from? And they start fighting. And all over the world, we're seeing that because the worlds are colliding and these heroes are popping up. And we're, I think that's when we'll finally see Halle Berry and we'll see these other people. The Fox Universe X-Men. All back. Obviously, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. And they'll start colliding into each other's worlds or transferring each other because the worlds are colliding. The universes are, are crashing into each other. And they'll be fighting. Uh, they'll be fighting because they don't understand what's happening. And why is this guy with power suddenly here? And that's why they're going to be fighting, not because they hate each other, because they don't know what the fuck's going on. And that's basically what the movie's going to be, bro. That's Avengers Doomsday. And the one who's going to figure out how to fix it is going to be Doctor Doom. Hopefully they follow the comic books and it's Doctor Doom and Doctor Strange that figure out how to fix it. And Doctor Strange agrees with Doctor Doom and says that is the only way to fix it. Do it. Become God and rewrite everything. Doctor Strange agrees with Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is fucking smart, bro. He is, he is the evil Tony Stark. In the comic books, he is the evil Tony Stark. He's the evil Tony Stark because he knows fucking robotics and, and technology. But he's also a magician. So he is even smarter than Tony Stark to me because he's almost like Doctor Strange and Tony Stark combined. That's the way he's always been. And, uh, and I hope they make him like that. You know what my theory is? Is that 100% when they do the reboot... Because at the end of Secret War, everything's going to get destroyed. The MCU is going to get destroyed. The Fox universe will get destroyed. Wherever the Fantastic Four will be come from, they're going to be destroyed. And Doom, because he'll have the ultimate power, Tony Stark, Doom, he will make a new world and place everyone back in there with new lives. Some of them will not even remember what happened. They'll be like, oh, I'm the police here, or I'm in charge of this, because he put them there. 
That's going to be weird. If they follow the comic books, that's what it's going to be like. And the Fantastic Four have built a ship. And they were able to stay outside of time when this happened. And when they did that, they were able to pull... This is in the comic books. Some heroes, just randomly. Whoever was nearby, they pulled them into the ship. And so now they have a group of randoms that know what life used to be like before. And they land in this new world. And everything's fucking... It's it's all Doom's creation. And everyone is like this guy. Thor is the police. And he has the Thor Corp. And there's tons of Thors. And they're the police of the world. It's crazy. And uh, it's a bunch of other crazy stuff. The world is different. Um, and so that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to fucking... That's, that's fucking Secret Wars. I think that's what they're going to follow. Um... It's going to be good, man. But this is all leading up to... This is all leading up to the reboot. Because at the end of Secret World Wars... Franklin Richards, in the comics, Franklin Richards and the Fantastic Four... Rebuilt the world... The way it used to be. But instead of having a multiverse, everything's just in one world. So in the comic books where Miles Morales was from a different universe, now he exists in the same universe as Peter Parker. And and his family's there and everything's normal. But everything's together. And so that's how they're going to say, now we have one timeline. The X-Men, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and the Avengers all finally are together. Some of the actors are different because we don't want to pay Tony Stark anymore. We have a new Iron Man. They will have Iron Man back. We will have T'Challa, Black Panther, male back. We're going to have a new Wolverine, not Hugh Jackman. And everyone's going to, there's going to be some new actors. I think they're going to have a new Captain America, Steve Rogers, white Steve Rogers. I think he'll be back. I think. I mean, that's the smartest thing to do. And some of these actors, like I even think Chris Evans will be replaced. They will have a new Thor. Because you have to have the next 10, 15 years. So you need younger actors. And it's a reset. It's a reset. You bring in new people. Tom Holland doesn't want to do this forever. They'll bring in a new Spider-Man. It's a reset. No explanations anymore. From now on, these are your new actors. Everyone's together, and this is the reset. And that's the way it's going to happen, bro. It's going to be the end of everything they fed us from 2008. Finally actually come to an end. And they, you know, it, it was good for a good 10 years. And then they just went downhill. And at least at the very end, they'll be able to bring it home to a good finish before the reset because who knows what these new actors or these new people are going to be like or new stories who fucking knows um but yeah this will be cool fox x-men versus mcu avengers or the avengers that are left because Chris Evans is not there, and Tony Stark is not there, and fucking... Well, I can't even get mad about Chadwick Boseman being dead, you know? That's a damn fucking shame and a tragedy. Uh, but yeah, it's just not the same anymore. I'll tell you one thing, my prediction is that in the reset, we're not going to get Logan Wolverine. I promise you. I used to say, because I'm just joking around, that there was going to be a transsexual Mexican female Wolverine. But no. I think I'm only half correct. I genuinely now believe that the Wolverine in the reset for the MCU, for the new MCU. And I hope they change the name. When they do the reset, they better change the MCU and give it a new fucking moniker. Honestly, I really do. I think it's going to be uh, Daphne King, Daphne King, X twenty three, that little girl. She's they're gonna keep her. She's young enough. 
And it's in the comics where she does take the mantle and calls herself the Wolverine. And she wears the suit. They make toys. That's the most obvious uh, choice that I think is going to happen with that. I think moving forward in the reset, we're not getting Logan Wolverine. I think we're going to get her, Laura, X-23 as the new Wolverine. My guess. My guess. That's that one thing that Marvel and Disney are crazy about. And they already said, we're not making a movie. But for sure, they want to include this in the Avengers Doomsday. Like I said, Avengers Doomsday is secretly going to be Avengers vs. X-Men. It is. That's basically what it's going to be. It's only called Doomsday because the worlds are ending. They're crashing into each other. That's what it's called Doomsday. And it's also called Doomsday because Doom is going to be the one who fixes it. And I'm going fixing it, right? Because he's going to create his own world. Everything is going to get destroyed, but he's going to create his own reality. So, yes. They said the fans are asking for it. We're going to make sure that Logan fights the Hulk in the next movie. Like when the X-Men fight the Avengers, they're going to have their fight scene. Not some fucking two second shit you saw on Deadpool. They're literally going to have Ruffalo's Hulk versus fucking Logan. Finally, uh, I think it'll be badass eye candy for all of us. As much as you, we want to hate the MCU and shit and a half. If they do this, even giving us a minute and a half. A minute and a half is like an eternity to see this in live action. All I'm saying is that they better. They better. Make sure they give this to the best visual effects artists. Fucking Lucas Arts motherfuckers. Um, some really good special effects artists. And make sure they take their time to make this look fucking good. Because I'm telling you, man. And I'm sorry. Because I was really excited of how good the story and how much I enjoyed the Deadpool 3 movie. Is that I did neglect to mention that the special effects in the Deadpool movie were shitty. It looked fake as fuck when Wolverine will put on the mask. It looks super shitty. I don't understand why there's pictures because they've been releasing pictures on the Instagram and shit of behind the scenes. And it looks cool and it looks real like a real mask. But when you see it... It looks CG and it looks like his face is not there. It just doesn't look good. It looks like his face is not there or his chin's not. <sighs> they just better make sure this fight, this minute and a half fight, because it's not going to be long, but it'll be longer in Deadpool, better be good looking for us. Man, the possibilities in this are crazy. I mean, we already saw kind of Wanda versus Doctor Strange. But could you imagine, like, Angel versus Falcon, you know? Uh, Gambit versus Hawkeye or some shit like that? Damn. You know, I... Did you like... Did you all like... Because I just saw the cunt put a... Uh, the whole uh, Cavill as Wolverine or uh, fucking not the cunt. Uh, fucking uh, Gomer. I hate that you guys change your names. I forget y'all's names. Gomer put Cavill as Wolverine. Cavill, he looked good, but I'm not going to lie to you. He was big. I mean, he was really tall and really buff. I mean, he was a humongous Wolverine. He looked like a beast. That's the only downside to it. Is that even though Hugh Jackman wasn't fucking 5'4", they showed us what an actual 5'... Five... I'm fucking 5'6", and I think I'm pretty short. I couldn't. I was like, no, man. In a movie, I mean, there's actors that are uh, at least six feet tall, the average actor. So you have to be somewhere there. Wolverine can't be 5'4". That's shorter than me. And that's comic book height. 
So, um, but fucking Cavill's humongous. He's a beast. And you could tell in that little short fucking, you know what they said about that short minute Maybe it was a minute, 30, 40 seconds that Cavill was on there, that little scene, if you saw the movie. But they said that Cavill got sick because he that cigar, he had to have it there. And that for eight hours, they filmed that. And I was thinking, they filmed eight hours for one minute of footage. Or even less than a minute that they used. You know, this is why these movies are costing $200 million and are bankrupting your goddamn studios. You idiots. What the fuck are they spending their money on? That scene with Cavill, I would have shot it like 30 minutes at the most. We're done for the day. Everyone go home and get drunk. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Eight hours? And he got stomachs because he doesn't like, he doesn't smoke or nothing. And that cigar got him all fucked up. They said, eight hours for that little scene? He didn't even have any lines? His one line was all like, you were just leaving. And he punches him. That's it. All he did was on the motorcycle in his back, turn around with the cigar, throw it. You were just leaving. Are you telling me he did that for eight hours? What kind of a shitty actor is that? That the director took eight hours to finally get him to do that one good take we just saw. Are you telling me for fucking seven, seven hours and 57 minutes, this dumbass was fucking up every take? <sighs> God damn it, Cavill. You're letting me down. Cavill's right now fighting with his whole fucking soul and life trying to get that Warhammer uh, TV series. Um, it's kind of greenlit, sort of. But he, because he's he's a producer, he's putting money into Warhammer. He doesn't want it greenlit until it's 100% faithful to the source material. And this guy's a nerd that's been playing since the tabletop game. This guy fucking is a real Warhammer nerd. He sits there and shit. I, are you guys, did you guys see that shit for the new Warhammer that's coming out in September? Or for the PS5 and Xbox? It looks nuts. I will just say that. I will just say that. It looks fucking insanity. Uh, so fucking keep out for that and shit. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate you all you motherfuckers for being here tonight. Representing on the record on a Friday fucking night and shit. Uh, thank you all. I've been enjoying the music. I'll keep posting the rest of my fucking old albums and shit. Like I said, I'm not really working on music lately. But if I start working on, I don't know, sometimes I'm fucking around. I might just record myself and I'll post my process. Show you guys what I do here and there. You know what I'm saying? But there's no future album or music coming. But I just want to put that stuff out there so it can be up there catalog. You know, for the rest of the, uh, at least until YouTube deletes it. For copyright strikes or some ass. For y'all motherfuckers, but that's the way it is, you know. But it's gonna be up there next week. You'll see some more albums posted until until I don't have any more. But anyways, uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm gonna leave you with just a little bit of some life advice to take home for the evening. All right. And the life advice is easy. Uh, always make sure that. You get a real jack. And I'm talking about like one of those things to lift your car. Because the shit that comes, a, a standard car that comes with you is this little piece of ass that could, couldn't even lift 
a fucking 70 pound pit bull up. And if you try to use that on your car to fix your flat, that shit's gonna fall, spit out, and you're gonna break your arm or your hand and shit. They call that shit the widow maker. Cause that shit is bullshit that comes from the factory. So as soon as you get a car, the first thing you should invest your money in is a good jack. All right, to lift your car, a good one. If you find even, even those big long, I know you say, oh yeah, I wanna have those big long ones. You, If you buy the big long ones, the big ones, motherfucker, even though they're heavy, I promise you, you'll never regret it. That flat tire is gonna be like one, two, three. That car is gonna be up there like that, motherfucker. And you're gonna be like, ah, this thing's heavy as fuck, but I'm done already. That's all I'll say, that big one's good, motherfucker. All right, just look on Craigslist. Mexicans, sometimes they steal that shit. They try to sell it on Craigslist. You'll find one, don't worry. Oh, yeah. Cheers, motherfuckers. I'll catch you next week. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?